blue J GAA shrimps. Exactly, Madrasa. Sounds like you've gone a bit farther ahead again. And that mean well I mean you know how excited I am. You know how excited I am. There's so much here. It's all so silly, but there's so much of it. Woo, World's Fair time! Exactly. The freaking great exhibition. With the not the Eiffel Tower and the Crystal Palace smashed into two. What? It's gonna be so much fun, y'all. You you're having a lot of feelings about the cases being partway through case four. Correct. So yes, um, as people are filtering in. This is the point where it definitely makes sense to start being stricter about spoilers. So, uh, yeah, because basically the next three cases are back to back to back fingers. And we don't want to spoil those. We don't, we don't want to spoil those, uh, so we are going to be a bit stricter about spoiler uh, spoiler warnings to the things that are either immediately relevant or things that have already shown up so that we can try to not spoil cases 4 and 5 while going through case 3. Cool? Cool. Anyway, uh, with the, I've got a lot to get through. Um, we're gonna see how far we can push. You are here for crime. Uh, good luck. We are. You are here for very silly crime. De-stressing from paperwork. This is a better thing to be doing. Um, I'm not sure that we'll actually de-stress because, oh boy, um, this sure is a case that has science. We promise. But uh, you know. It should be enjoyable anyway. Also, uh, other thing. These, the next few streams are brought to you with apologies to all of my Czech and uh, German friends. You will understand why when we get there. But without further ado, an introduction and then let's get in. So hello everyone and welcome to Ludo History. As always, I'm Adam. Uh, and today we are hopping back into Great Ace Attorney Chronicles this time resolve case three. That means we're getting close to the end game, uh, and things are just going to start snowballing. There's a lot going on here, and there's a lot of really cool history. There's a lot of what year is it? So we're gonna definitely dig into some of that over the next few streams. Uh, we're gonna see how quickly we can push through these. Uh, as always, if you miss any of the stream, it will be on Twitch for two weeks after the stream, and then on YouTube. And if you are watching the VOD, hello, we appreciate you, but we uh, also definitely encourage you to come join us live, because the streams are way more fun, and we do a wide variety of historical games that I can take your fancy. Also, if you really enjoy this, do consider following, subscribing, or supporting on Patreon, patreon.com slash history. It helps a lot, it is really the biggest thing that helps me be able to do this, so it is always appreciated. Uh, and also just spread the word so that we get more people in, more friends, more history. Now without further ado, let's get stuck in. The Return of the Great Departed Soul. Yes, start playing from here. We've got a Doom Laser, we have London, the Great Wheel, the Great Exhibition of London, the Austrian the Empire. The grand end of the century Great Exhibition of London. Surely there is not a soul who has failed to hear of it. Wondrous new works of culture and industry from every corner of the globe had converged on Hyde Park. Welcoming over 50 million visitors. The last great hurrah Chat, of the century. What year is it? 
astonished and delighted people of all nations and ended on a note of resounding success. But as regards to the terrible catastrophe that occurred during the festivities, very few were aware my friend Mr. Herlock Sholmes had a hand in unraveling the matter. For from the shadows, it was he who earnestly sure. unearthed sure it was, Watson. the fact that it was. Sure it was. And like the centerpiece of the great exhibition, which rose high into the skies of Hyde Park. Sholmes's brilliant deductions, as clear and lofty as the crystal tower itself, Hello, brought drum. the truth to light. So, uh, chat, what, what year is it? This is, I think, the first time we have got an explicit confirmation. The ground of the great exhibition, which is absolutely packed with people. We'll get back to you in a moment, old-timey radio man. Um, but yes, right. This is the first time we've gotten explicit things, but we are in the very last years of the 19th century in this game. Obviously, we are in Guardia 1000 AD. Duh. Indeed. Who could possibly forget that this is just Chrono Trigger? Uh, surprise chat, we're playing a different game now. But no, seriously, uh, they, right, we've heard a lot of, like, vague talk that were sometime in, like, the last, either late 19th century or early 20th century, and then, like, and then we get very clear confirmation, end of the 19th century. The weather is unusually fine, and we're about to witness a most extraordinary scientific experiment. Indeed. Oh. Wrong button. Ladies and gentlemen, the 20th century will see steam engines and electrical power dominate the world. Horse-drawn carts will give way to the motor car. Ships will sprout wings and take to the skies. And today, we showcase even more advanced technology. A glimpse into the future. A world first. A demonstration of my super high voltage instantaneous kinesis machine! Um. Super high voltage instantaneous kinesis Amar machine. Will literally be disassembled a by a electrocuting high people to teleport them. And beams to another location. Whereupon his body will be reassembled by a series of complex calculations exactly as it was before. <laughs> But a few moments from now, this gentleman will, in the blink of an eye, complete an incredible journey through the air. To arrive an instant later on the Crystal Tower behind you! <laughs> Indeed. Well... So they figured out how to make a Heisenberg compensator in the late 19th century in this universe? Well, about that. Uh, about that. Do any of the NPCs in this game have normal human movement or voices? No! What would make you think that they have, like, normal human movement or voices? This is an Ace Attorney game, KJ. Bruno! Bruno, are you listening? No, oh, sorry, uh, what was that, Iris? What's the matter with you? You've been miles away all morning. Did you like what I cooked for breakfast? N no, no, that's not it at all. Um, what were you talking about again? Today's paper! It's full of news about the Great Exhibition again! Never use a teleporter at a county fair or even a global exposition. By the way, Blues, uh, you pointed out quite helpfully, uh... Oh, stop it. Game, don't be like this. Don't, no, stop it. Jesus. Uh, the Greater Britain Expo Expo Exhibition was on 8th of May 1899 in Earl's Court. This is not uh, what this 
Well, this is a real event, and that is a good shout. This is definitively not what this is. Because there's two things that make this definitively not the Greater Britain exhibition. Firstly, the international component. Uh, we saw references to specifically the Ottoman Empire and the Austro-Hungarian Empire uh, in both the like background cutscene uh, and in the title card for the piece. And the second thing uh, is that the location is wrong. It's in the height. The this exhibition is supposedly in Hyde Park, not Earl's Court, and those two places are not close to each other. So yes, this is adopting the dates, but not the times, of the Great Exhibition of 1851, which is the only major World's Fair that London hosted uh, in the 19th century. So it, it is... Uh, Referencing that and is using its time frame, but it's setting it almost 50 years later and changing the Crystal Palace, the centerpiece of that exhibition, into the Crystal Tower, a knockoff of the Eiffel Tower, specifically designed to irritate the French. Which honestly is a mood, but that's okay. Oh, stop it. I just want to see what lines I missed. Stop it. History. There we go. Uh, yes, the Great Exhibition. I'd like to go sometime. You're really not your usual self today. You seem very down. Don't you agree, Hurley? Hmm? Did you say something, Iris? Oh gosh, you're even more down! Oh yeah. Ah! When did you arrive, Mr. Narahedo? By the way, I wanted to check something. Um... Is it in here? No. Sorry, we're gonna actually... We're gonna make a save file real quick. Uh... And then... We're actually gonna back out, because I was... I was informed that there may actually be an alternate costume for Iris. And if there is an alternate costume for Iris, I want to see if I can activate that. So we're going to be... We're going to be actually backing out just real quick because I do want to check on that. Unfortunately, there's no way to do that outside of the special contents page. We'll see if... We'll see if they're act... No. I've only got three. Sad. There are no bonus outfits. I'm sad. Oh well. W when did you arrive, Mr. Narahodo? I've been here for about half an hour already. We had breakfast together. Oh, Lonely Spaceport. You have no clue who any of these people are. You joined this the stream series a bit late. Right. So this is Herlock Scholes. Definitely not Sherlock Holmes. Uh, what are you talking about? I'm sure there's no relationship between the two. Uh, the other person we've seen is Iris Wilson, who is supposedly the daughter of John H. Wilson, who is completely unrelated to John Watson. I have no idea what you're talking about. Also, John H. Wilson was murdered in the tutorial case of the first game. Our main character, Ryanosuke Narahodo, is the... Uh, Great grandfather, probably, maybe, will they leave a bag of Phoenix Wright? And that, that's just a thing. He is an exchange student from Japan uh, studying law in Great Britain uh, after replacing his best friend, Kazuma Sogi, who was killed aboard the steamship to London. Oops. And honestly, that's all we need to know to start. And also, yes, Iris is 10 years old and has a doctorate in medicine and is also the author of all of the Sherlock Holmes stories. Oh, sorry, all of the Herlock Holmes stories in Rantz Magazine, which is definitely not Strand Magazine, the publication for in which Arthur Conan Doyle published the Sherlock Holmes stories. I have no idea what you're talking about. I think, I think that covers it. What? Why didn't you mention it before? 
Okay. Um. Uh, thought you might have known I was here. You know, because breakfast. Hmm. I wish it's quite a lot. You're clearly lacking, lacking a bit. So much so that I didn't notice your presence. Thanks. Of course, I could deduce the reason perfectly well with some simple observations. What? Let's see. Yes. For example, your tussled hair this morning with is always unruly spikes. Clearly, I can deduce that for that. Um, let me stop you there, Mr. Sholmes, because I think I can see where this is going. My hair always looks like this. It always has. Ever since we first met, in fact. Uh, really? How interesting. It just doesn't look like a haircut as such, I suppose. <laughs> Thanks again. It crossed my mind recently, but it's been six months now. Six months since I was forbidden from working in court. So I've been wondering how much longer I'm going to be banned. Oh. Well, that would explain why you seem rather glum. Don't you agree, Billy? Hmm? Did you say something? Iris? Ah. Back to nothing. Hey, we we love Herlock Sholmes here. Yes, he does look extremely punchable, but also we love her. You will appreciate if you do not like Herlock Sholmes, you will appreciate this case immensely. What's the matter with Mr. Sholmes today? He seems even more down in the dumps than me. Oh jeez, a wolfie with the tier 1 gift he sent to Dildrum. Oh, thank you, Wolfie and Dildrum. Enjoy your emotes. I know! And the great exhibition is opened! You'd think he'd be excited. Oh, why don't we all go to see it together? I want to! Of course I do. But I can't. Not for the time being. Why not? Why not? Why not? Because I'm a great detective after all. So you're involved in some tricky case that you can't be distracted from? Is that it? And another one to Lonely Space Board. Thank you, Wolfie. I don't remember hearing that you're working on the case, Harley. I suppose I should try to find out what's going on. You are currently looking at ticket costs for the Great Exhibition. I appreciate that. But first things first, let's look around. Iris, what are you, do what are you cooking up today? Uh, yes, this is why you know that idea, is this it, Iris? What's in the melting pot today? Hmm. The blue carbuncle? Yes, it's from a case of theft that Haley solved ages ago. The theft of a precious stone. A carbuncle is another name for a garnet, you see, especially if it's cut with a rounded top. Oh, really? And this garnet was blue, was it? Well, that's the thing. They're usually red. No blue garnets have ever been discovered. Oh. So, who knows what the stolen gemstone actually was? That's the real mystery of the case. A proper Hamachon's conundrum, huh? Well, I don't think there's all that much new going on here, I'll be honest. I do love a good fire in the colder months. Watching the flames flickering and dancing about is just so very relaxing. Cleaning out the chimney isn't so relaxing, though. No, getting covered in soot isn't my idea of fun. You know, Haley decided he was going to clean it out himself last year. You can guess what happened, can't you? He got himself stuck inside the flue. He's a very slim man, I admit, but there are limits to where a full-grown man can fit. Now every time he goes off by the fire, he has nightmares about it. Chat, don't tell me that this means Iris is the window cleaner. Don't... Don't tell me that this means Iris is, is, doing, is being a chimney sweep. 
Please tell me this doesn't mean that Iris is being a chimney sweep. That would be extremely bad for uh, those people. from those people. Um, so, right, I mean, Mary Poppins glorifi glorifying the tradition of the chimney sweep aside, um, chimney sweeps were one of the uh, two most common and dramatic cases of, uh, you know, horrifying child labor. Just, just saying. Um, in the Victorian period, right, the other big one being coal miners. And both have a similar thing of making children very, very sick due to uh, extremely toxic uh, material inhalation. And, uh, you know, literally no social safety net to ensure health care and safe housing and adequate pay while doing it. So, you know, William Blake, uh, Lewis Sinclair, etc. Uh, have some really heart-wrenching Oh, don't forget cotton processing. You're right. Good, good third shout on that. Uh, but yeah, turns out having children inhale ash all day is a good way to give them lung disease at the age of 10. So yeah, William Blake, Lewis Sinclair, etc. Kind of leave, and Charles Dickens uh, are write some really heart wrenching accounts. Some true, some yes, half true. Uh, of the uh, horrific uh, work conditions, even for children that were that had jobs instead of being beggars or pickpockets, and it's not a good time. It's not a good time, and the game throws it out a little bit casually. Oh, all these different pieces of evidence from cases that Mr. Shaw's has solved are very interesting. The trouble is, Hurley forgets things so quickly, he never remembers why these things are relevant. The other day, for example, he saw the orange pips over there and decided to plant them in the garden. Pips? Yes, no, they're full spreading now. We have five new little plants. No, oh, well, I don't know what case they were from, but... If Mr. Jones can get oranges to grow outside in England, he should change his profession. True. True. Okay. I think that's most most things helpful. It has now been six months, by the way, since we were banned. Since the finale of Great Ace Attorney Chronicles 1, wherein we got banned from working in courtrooms on the grounds that we were given falsified evidence to work with. H half a year ago now, I took on the defense of a young girl in a trial held at the Old Bailey. When it first seemed like a simple case of murder that took place at a London pawn brokery, turned out to be one part of a much more far-reaching plot than both the British government. If you missed Great Ace Attorney Chronicles 1, here is the summary of Case 5 of Great Ace Attorney Chronicles 1. During the course of the trial, it was found that I made an unavoidable, yet at the same time unforgivable mistake. Words fail. The situation is utterly deplorable. Mr. Narahara. Yes, my lord. I will decide upon your fate following the conclusion of this trial. Of course, my lord. No, no, it, it was specifically uh, for using false evidence in the McGilda trial. It, it was specifically for using falsified evidence in the McGilda trial uh, and uh, Gina Lestrade's perjury that uh, we got banned for. In the end, I had my right to represent people in court revoked. I was told I had to spend my time in research and study, so that's what I've been doing. You have, haven't you, Bruno? Reading all those big fat terms about British law up in your room, and the notes about Sholmes' old cases. Brewing ours with special bottles of tea, fetching my daily bread for me. You become something of a man serving around here. Stone of the silverware next, Master Narahado. Well, I'm thinking I'd like to ask the powers that be to reconsider. Specifically, Lord Strongheart at the British Supreme Court on Whitehall. Lord Strongheart? 
You are the Eiffel Lord Chief Justice. Not my favourite fellow. She's not mine either, but she's the man I have to talk to. She's the only one who can grant permission for me to start working in the courts again. I came to Britain to become the best lawyer I could. And I can't do that just sitting around here. The whole of London has been swept up, swept up in this great exhibition, hasn't it? The most advanced science, the most modern technology, the finest works of art and feats of engineering. For the next six months, our capital will be showcasing these things, and the world will be watching. Oh, do you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to look down on London for one of those lovely balloons. Look down on? Do, do, do you mean those things fly? Yes, of course. They fly high in the sky and don't even need wings to do it. All you need is hot air. But how? What does hot air have anything to do with flying? It makes no sense. I can't understand it at all. That's true of a lot of new scientific discoveries. Most people can't understand them at first. But in a hundred years' time, all these things will just become knowledge. I suppose they might be. Mind you, some of the science being demonstrated seems very questionable. Something went wrong with the open extreme mutation st stage yesterday, apparently. There was a huge explosion. Still, I wish I'd seen it, though. I'd love to see how bad some of these scan experiments really are. Says the innocent ten-year-old girl. See here. Every page of the paper carries some article or another about the trade exhibition. Finally, we can have a Sholmes' ego-powered flying machine. Well, the amount of energy you could generate from Sholmes' ego could power far more than just a flying machine, Magistrate. But the brighter things shine, the darker the shadows that are cast behind them. Personally, I find myself drawn to the darkness, to the impenetrable. That is my proper atmosphere. The Red Exhibition newspaper has been entered into the corporate. Shadows cast behind? Is that a metaphorical way of referring to the back page of the paper? Hey, it was almost... It was almost profound. But also, yes. So many glowing reports about the Great Exhibition and everything that's going on there. Other than this rather gloomy, look, gloomy looking one, that is. Wait, what? What's the matter, Rita? Fiery ball gowns had stands hollow blades. The evening of cordial dancing turned into a blazing ball last week when one of the ladies attendees when the lady attendees dresses accidentally caught on fire. In a panic at the sudden appearance of flames at her feet, the lady dashed madly about the whole of the thing, igniting a fewer than three something or others. Thankfully the fire is something something. Pray court, here's I glass case. The Jus de Pas of Nini was presented today with a most curious case of a lady who refused to pay her dues to the purchase of one glass eye. The whole affair began when Madame Thuyer, the defendant, ordered the eye's replacement for the natural eye she had lost. Upon its arrival, she found that she could see no more with it than she could before, and became incensed at the thought of paying for a deficient product. The Jus de Pas, the Jus de Pas attempted to reason with the Madame, but the endeavor proved to be entirely fruitless. Um, I want to see if this is a real thing uh, on, on the other side, because the newspapers in this game are universally great, but this one might actually be a real thing, which means this may be a certified what year is it moment. Oh, it totally is. Chat, get, get your what year is it uh, ready, because oh boy, we're going to need it. In rather unexpected fashion, King Christian VIII of Denmark uh, issued a proclamation today of the results of his something or other uh, as to the winner of the prize was um, his predecessor Frederick VI offered something to discover any uh, comet with the aid of a telescope. It appears that the winner will not even be a man at all, but rather a young American lady by the name Maria Mitchell of Nantucket, Massachusetts. Though there were multiple competing claims of the new comet's discovery from all nations, including one by British astronomer Mr. William Roger Dawes, King Christian was swayed by the fervent petition of Harvard President Edward Everett, Everett who urged the Chargé d'Affaires of the United States at Copenhagen, uh, 
as the fact of uh, Miss Mitchell's something discovery is undoubted and something, it would be a pity if she should not be awarded the medal. Chat. This event is a real event that occurred between 1847 and 1848. Maria Mitchell did discover a comet that was uh, 1847 VI, also known as Miss Mitchell's Comet, in 1847 and was awarded a medal by King Christian VIII of Denmark shortly before his death in 1848. I love this game's newspapers. This is not even the most what the fuck newspaper uh, in this case. But, so that means we're going to elaborate on this uh, in probably in about two weeks when we get to the other one. But do put a pin in this because this strategy of historicizing newspapers by just putting events from literally all over the place and all over the uh, time period that one could call Victorian into the same things. So, we'll talk about it more later when we have one that we can actually examine. Uh, in more detail, but do know, this is a thing. This is a thing this game does consistently, and I am delighted that I found another one. The Reaper attacked. That's that's the one seeks. This must be what Mr. Schultz was talking about. Does he know any more? I wonder. Every article on the front page is news about the Great Exhibition. Public experiments to demonstrate brand new scientific ideas, cultural exhibits from around the globe. It's also positive and hopeful about the coming century. We must not go to see it properly before too long. Lost Cat. Please contact if you have any information. My beloved family cat disappeared recently at something or other. I am unable to read the rest of that text. But what a good kitty! I also want to know what's in the public health report and what's going on at St. Bart's. Yeah, Dildrum. That is a great thought that it's right tying in the exhibition with the Crystal Palace because of the 50 year ish time gap. The problem is that that is going to fall apart later when we get a newspaper that is 10 years before present that also references things from the 1850s. I have very many thoughts, but, um, you know. We will save those for more content down the road. More gloomy mood. Are you investigating a particularly tricky case at the moment, Mr. Shons? You can say that, I suppose. Nothing more to add? That's not like you. What sort of case is it? Shh! Quiet, Mr. Narahaya. We must not discuss it here. You never know who might be listening. You're acting very strangely, Hurley. What do you mean, Iris? Well, well, usually, the more mysterious and complicated the case is, the better Hurley's mood. Ugh. Is it really a case that's bothering you? Iris, please, you mustn't exercise your astute powers of observation and deduction on me without invitation. Wolfie, I absolutely do not plan to finish this case today. We, this is probably the next three weeks, and then we'll try and blaze through cases four and five at speed. Remember what I always say, put yourself in the shoes of the individual about whom you're making deductions. You say that, do you? You. Mr. Shorns. Never mind. Once I've had a cup of tea, I must make my way out once to the crime scene. Uh, that was a deep sigh. It says in the paper that Lord Van Zeeks was attacked. That's terrible. You know the legend of the Reaper of the Bailey, of course, don't you? Only too well, in fact. Yes? 
Han har security att bära rakt av Zeus. They say that if the Reaper is the prosecutor in the case, there's no salvation for whoever's in the dock. Even if the defendant is found not guilty. Once the Reaper has someone in his sights, one way or another, that person's time left on this earth will be cut short. London's finest rogues always find ways around the law. They'll stop at nothing to secure an acquittal or trial. Falsifying evidence, paying sham witnesses, threatening jurors, bribing judges. But even such devious tactics as these cannot save them from the hands of the Reaper. As you've experienced yourself, haven't you, Mr. Nonario? Yes, I've seen the Reaper's retribution at works. You wish traveling with the Herlock Holmes name? As the dear French novel spoofing of Sherlock Holmes is giving me cognitive dissonance. Yeah, understandable. But also, this is like a totally different spoof than uh, Maurice Leblanc's uh, Arsène Lupin novels. But it's just as fun. It's just as fun of a spoof. Also, this is... The reason why they changed this, uh, actually, the Japanese version of the game just says it's Sherlock Holmes. The specific reason why they do this is that while most other characters from the Sherlock Holmes stories are not in copyright, Sherlock Holmes himself, I think it's Holmes and Watson, are the last two in copyright thanks to the film adaptations. And so, this is a way of dodging copyright, the time-honored mention or, or method of dodging UK copyright laws. by making it Tomac Holmes and John Wilson. Yeah, Tobias Gregson is still just Tobias Gregson. He's just Tobias Gregson. No, no name changes required. Many of these criminal rogues are reckless and quite unafraid to die. If a leader among their fraternity is seen to have been taken by the Reaper, retaliation like this does occur. Really, the capital has a never-ending supply of such scoundrels. So... Do you mean... Lord Van Zeeks has been attacked like this before? This isn't the first time? He's quite an accomplished combatant, you know? He doesn't take these attacks lying down. Although... It seems that his assailants were armed with guns this time. Oh my goodness! Is, is he alright then? Is Lord Van Zeeks hurt? My dear fellow! How on earth would I know? Well, in the article here it says, as to what of Lord Van Zeeks in the condition, it will be revealed in tomorrow morning edi tomorrow's morning edition. Ah, I see. Well, we shall have to be patient then. No, 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 I can't wait until tomorrow. In that case, you shall have to apply with somebody in the know. But who? What, Strongheart? Perhaps? I must be leaving now. Yes, understood. See you later, Mr. Jones. Ha! You really are a shameless liar sometimes, my dear fellow. What? You seek to put me off my guard and follow me, don't you? Well, you would be wasting your time. The thoughts hadn't crossed my mind. But now I'm wondering where you're going. <laughs> well then, see you later indeed. Listen to him. He's still laughing on his way out of the door. Alright then, Reno. Let's get going. No. Um, Iris? What are you wearing? I've got changed to get to the Great Exhibition. You're going to take me. What? But I was just about to go to the Supreme Court. Oh, well, that sounds fun. You're going to take me there then. Alright. Fine, just... What about that weapon, what do you? Of course, and after the Supreme Court, then we'll go to see the Great Exhibition. Thank you, Iris. Iris does not take prisoners, no. No, Iris is brutal. No chill at all. 22nd of October. British Supreme Court, Lord Chief Justice Office. Also, why the heck would we let you be opening a great exhibition in October? Chat, I would like to point out this doesn't actually... 
there's no reasonable metric by which they would be actually opening this in October. It seems to mostly be the fact that this was the closing of the Great Exhibition, so they're opening it for the other Great Exhibition. It's going to be hard to keep these straight, isn't it? I'm going to call it Crystal Palace and Crystal Tower, okay? Crystal Palace is the historical Great Exhibition, then from May to October 1851. Crystal Tower is this game, okay? Okay. It's been about six months now since I was last here. But some things never change, like the sense of foreboding I, I always seem to feel in this place. You ever notice how the goggles for Selma make it look like a tiny little mouse? Like Ryo's little lad? It doesn't seem to be bothering Iris at all though. She's happily reading over there. Well, isn't this cute? Tick, tock, tick. Oh, I love this place! I always find so many interesting books here. Of course. I was forgetting that you've been here before. The time I came here six months ago. When Suzato-san was given the news that she was to return to Japan. Ah, oh, I understand that you wish to speak with me. Oh, you, Lord Strawhat. I tr trust you've been c keeping well? Let's see. Since you arrived and requested an audience, it's been four hours, 32 minutes, and... 26 seconds. I've kept you waiting a while. My apologies. Oh, no, not at all. I like nothing more than standing around, standing into space. Good to know. Good to know that doesn't appear to bother him at all. It's been a while since we've seen her. Male Strongheart, Lord Chief Justice of London. He's the man who allowed me to start practicing as a defense lawyer when I arrived in Britain as a student. You need only savor the air for a moment in this grand office to understand his preeminent status. As you will be aware, the Great Exhibition of London is now underway at last. We're extremely busy as a result, policing the grounds, guarding the new technologies, dealing with petty crime. And furthermore, as of next month, we shall open the International Forensic Science Symposium. Duh, I've not heard about that. Investigating authorities from 40 countries around the globe will be taking part, including from your own land. Forensic science is the future. The world must embrace it. As we're the hosting nation, I have much to do. And it is my highest priority. If others must wait for my attention as a result, so be it. Well, it's nice to know where I stand. So, you wish to consult with me? Of course, I can very well imagine what this is about. Yeah, well, um, thank you for agreeing to this meeting, my lord. I um, want to be allowed to start working as a defense lawyer again in court. That's what brought me here today. But actually, there's something else playing on my mind as it happens. Who you know, just take a deep breath and come out with it. The International Forensic Science Symposium, a completely fictional event that ran concurrent to the Crystal Tower exhibition. Nathan. I actually came here today to ask for your permission. Go on. Six months ago, my right to work in court as a lawyer was revoked, and I was told to spend my time studying. Obviously, I'm very sorry for what happened, but the thing is, it made me understand what it really means to defend somebody's, uh, somebody under the rules of a foreign justice system. And I desperately, desperately want to have another go. Please, permit me to enter the courtroom again. Mr. Narahoda. Yes? Yeah, here it comes. I'm sure you haven't forgotten your position here, have you? At best, you are a substitute for your compatriot. This was never your intended role. Well, that's true. The Japanese government actually sent my best friend on this study tour, not me. It should have been Kazuma. He was so determined to bring change to our own justice system at home. That was his calling. If that tragic accident hadn't happened, I wouldn't be here in this office now. Mr. Rosogi was my best friend, you see? That's why I can't leave it unfinished. I have to fill his calling for him. 
He's calling, you say. Has it never occurred to you? That perhaps you know nothing of his true calling? Sorry? The mission with which that young law student was charged. What do you suppose it really was? D what do you mean? Mission? He's not making any sense. Never mind. I've read all the reports he submitted over the past six months. It's clear to me that you regret your actions and have been studiously obeying your revised instructions. D do you mean... As of this moment, I reinstate your license to practice law here in Great Britain. Thank you! Thank you so much! That's wonderful news, Reno! In fact, I believe I have the perfect case to mark your comeback. A curious affair. You'll consider it, I hope? Yeah, of course. Please tell me more. Uh, Miss Beaglebird, hello. Thank you for the follow just now. If you don't mind, uh, say hi. Uh, and tell us what you're kind of interested in. I'd love to hear more. You described it as a curious affair? Yes, that's right. I believe it was reported in the press. Are you aware that there was a serious accident at the Great Exhibition yesterday? No. No. Yes, I read about it. A professor from Germany tried to carry out a crazy experiment. Let me see. How is it described? A super high voltage instantaneous kinesis, I think. Instantaneous kinesis? As in moving things with a click of the fingers? That's right. It's just my herbal blends need. A dash of devil may care. Whatever this serious accident was exactly, it's clearly captured Iris' imagination. It's an unfortunate business. A large explosion engulfed the public experimentation stage, and a man lost his life. A certain Mr. Odie Asper, an inventor, investor, and well-known figure in society. Well, uh, Chad. Puns? Can we get uh, puns in the chat? What do you think the odds are that he's a good person? A large explosion? Uh, a man died? The man responsible for the experiment was Professor Albert Hairbreath. Chad, also no points for guessing, uh... for this name either. Get just a flicker of a what year is it? But no, no points for guessing the inspiration for this name. He was detained immediately after the incident and is due uh, to appear in court tomorrow. A hairbrain, but also Albert Einstein. But Albert hairbrain. Right, he's a hairbrain. But also Einstein. On the charge of murder. What? Murder? If you intend to take on his defense, you should hurry to meet with him at the prison. There is very little time left for you to carry out any kind of investigation. This is a great exhibition. A scientific experiment gone wrong, and murder? I feel out of my depth before it even started, still. We should get to the professor prison straight away then and try to meet with this German professor, don't you think? Definitely. Ah oh, yes, one more thing about the case. There's a connection with our mutual acquaintance, the Reaper. Don't, with Lord Van Zietz? All sorts of conferences have been taking place around the world to coincide with the Great Exhibition. And next month, the largest and most important of them all will take place at last. The International Forensic Science Symposium. It does seem as though criminal investigation needs to embrace scientific methods, doesn't it? Exactly! Yeah. London, 
The global epicenter of culture, science, and wealth now has a population exceeding 6 million. Sadly, crime in the capital is growing at a similarly startling rate. So it's imperative that we use the latest scientific methods to investigate and resolve cases as efficiently as possible. Which is what's, which is what's known as forensic science, isn't it? Exactly. The future of policing. Huh? Regrettably, however, Britain is currently dragging its feet when it comes to the adoption of forensic methods. Oh dear, that's alarming. Exactly! It's extremely alarming! Ah! Stop it, Strongheart, you're scaring the pigeons! Don't, don't be rude to your pigeons like this. If I were Her Majesty's Attorney General, you can be sure the numbers of crimes committed and resolved in London would be very different to the current figures. And I can cite 12 solid arguments and 223 individual reasons to support my claim. Sorry? By way of apologies for keeping you waiting earlier, I shall detail every one now. What? Oh, how fascinating! It all began 15 years ago. I was blah 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 blah. It's okay that I saw Gregson going by and decided to go for the fish and chips. True. And that more or less sums up my feeling on the matter, in the simplest of terms, of course. Essentially, to formally establish a forensic investigation division within Scotland. That is my mission. Oh, right. Yes, that's wonderful. For this dude, have you considered enacting social problems to prevent crime instead of just getting good at solving them? Now, I hear you, and I respect your opinion, but let me propose instead having horrifyingly brutal prison systems involving completely meaningless hard manual labor along with a propaganda appropriating the medieval past to pretend that they were totally just as brutal we promise as in order to act as a completely ineffectual but very stylish uh, deterrent to crime rights. How does that sound? It's the best compromise I can offer. Exactly. Wonderful is precisely what it will be. But she isn't paying attention at all. She's got her nose in another book now. Oh, is it over? Did you learn anything useful? I actually drifted off for the most part. He's surprisingly ardent about forensic science. Chad, you, you seem unimpressed. Are you saying you didn't like my alternative suggestion? I mean, you could, I guess you could be like Hull House or, uh, actually Adams founded Hull House, didn't she? House is the one I'm most familiar with. Uh, right, you could have privately run charitable organizations that uh, sort of kind of not really uh, re fulfill some of the social uh, inequality and uh, philanthropic work that is sorely lacking in the uh, government, the uh, state policy of Victorian England. But uh, it is very much done by private charitable organizations. And in Victorian England, that was seen as a good thing, and in fact, a good Protestant thing at that. Don't... don't transplant social programs onto private charities and or religious institutions, please. It doesn't work. Anyway... Oh, that reminds me. Have you seen this? The reports of the overwhelming success of the Great Exhibition? Of course. No, no, not that. The story on the back page. What story? Reaper attacked. Ah, oh, that. 
You've enjoyed some victories in court against my number one prosecutor, have you not? Oh, Mr. Reaper, what happened to him? He, he wasn't killed, was he? Wealthy white women running charities, poor women running actual campaigns for legal social reform. Exactly. And, remember, when the uh, elite white women get involved on those large-scale legal social reforms, they make sure to do it in as maximally a racist way as possible. Some of the uh, suffrage movements of the leading suffragists of the UK movement in the Edwardian period were explicitly race scientists. Because late 19th and early 20th century uh, England is a complete trash fire, and even the parts that are interesting are also trash fires. There's no need for concern. Lord Van Zeeks would not be so easily dispatched, I assure you. Indeed. In fairness, the Temperance Movement was very much focused on leaving abuse by spouses and parents. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Brady Mike and uh, Lonely Space Warp, y'all, I have terrible news for you. It doesn't get better. We're going in a little bit when we actually get to the scene of the Great Exhibition. We're going to be talking a bit about the Chicago Columbian Exposition, which is my favorite thing, but it's also extremely yeesh, yeesh. Can you tell us what happened? I'd really love to know. Very well, if it interests you. It does, strangely. Thank you, Strongheart. Fortunately, Lord Van Zeeks emerged from the attack unscathed. Street ruffians are no match for that man. He's a very capable fighter. But, but that's incredible. They were armed with guns. What was he attacked though? Do we know? It's related to events that occurred a month ago. A leader of one of the capital's criminal organizations was indicted and prosecuted by Van Zeeks. But the man was acquitted. I've no doubt large sums of money were involved behind the scenes. Large sums of money? A deplorable situation. Members of the jury were bribed, it seems. However, despite winning his freedom, the man in question met a dramatic end yesterday. But, but you're not suggesting that was the work of the Reaper, shall we? The victim's henchmen certainly seem to think so. He was a name, man by the name of Aspen. Mr. Odie Aspen. Did... did you say Aspen? That's the man who died in the big explosion at the Great Exhibition! Yes, known publicly as an investor, but in reality, the head of a significant criminal organization. Unbelievable. I wonder... could I ask you something, Lord Strongheart? Try me. Why do you lo use Lord Van Zeeks as a prosecutor? All the criminals who managed to get off in court then meet with mysterious ends outside the courtroom. And fearful of their faith, they seek to strike at Lord Van Zeeks first. I know there's no evidence that he actually is the Reaper in that sense, but still, something's clearly going on here. I have Van Zeeks work for the prosecution service for two reasons. Firstly, the man is the best prosecutor in the capital, bar none. Oh, less! Strongheart! You're not supposed to indict your own prosecution service that thoroughly. You know, that doesn't bode well. And secondly, any deaths of criminals that have occurred outside the courtroom following his trials are nothing clear. But that doesn't make sense. How can you explain the way that so many have died if not by someone's hand? Van Zeeks may have earned himself the moniker of the Reaper, but he is no killer, so he will continue to prosecute on behalf of the Crown. Unless he wishes otherwise, of course. Thank you. Well, I must be leaving for my next engagement.
Who could have guessed that ODR's name could have been such an odious man? Local contest and this world is shocked by such revelations. Thank you very much for that extremely enlightening comment. I'm already 11 hours and 16 minutes late. My colleagues may be starting to fidget. Is 11 hours late? That's quite something. That meeting had already started when I arrived back here for this engagement with you. So lateness was inevitable. Time stops for no man. But I'm sure it stopped for me during those 12 solid arguments and 223 reasons. Oh, yes, where would I find Lord Van Zeeks now? I would assume he's at his office. Right, I'll go and ask him about the attack in person. I want to get this straight from the horse's mouth. I'm away with you now, and leaving Professor Hairbrain's defense entirely in your hands. If, of course, yes. Thank you very much, my lord. Yay! Oh, I'd love to share that big clock of party now. I think I, Shane Kedrich, would stare to let you find a very deal makes me whittle one of the oversight thank you into a shit and just a while left. Thank you, Magister, sir. <laughs> I am appreciating, I'm appreciating this commentary in the newspaper reports following the death of Odie Aspen from the other delightfully and completely legitimate characters in London, in the capital of England. Well. Chat, which one do we go to first? Do you want to meet Albert Herbrain? Or do you want to meet Barack Van Zeeks in his office? His office is great, just by the way. Actually, both of these are great, but uh... Herbrain? Chat. All right, let's look. Chat says hair rank first. The warden said cell eleven. That's this one. Oh, there's someone curled up in a ball in the back corner. Look. What's his name? Uh, Professor Albert Herbrain, wasn't it? Um, excuse me, Professor Herbrain. Who are you? Um, Ryanosuke Naruhado, a defense lawyer. A lawyer! Uh, was it something I said? Uh, a lawyer, you say? What, what, what? Would, would you be here uh, 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 about the experiment? Are you going to defend my hypothesis? You. Hypothesis on uh, yesterday's demonstration. That demonstration was the magnificent demonstration was it was an out and out success by anyone's calculations. But but despite despite that, no one listens, no lawyer believes in the science, was it's fine they all leave at high velocity. <sighs> now it's probably not a good time to mention that your zeal made my concentration leave for a while too. Yeah, you mentioned the demonstration yesterday? The papers have called it a spectacular failure. I told a man back in the explosion, didn't he? <laughs> yes, you could interpret the results that way if you really wanted to. Well, I, I suppose in the strictest sense, this moment was a failure, but at the same time, it was a great success. But you've lost me. I saw it with my own eyes, right there in front of me. Mr. Asman was spontaneously disassembled. I told that everything was going exactly as my calculations had predicted. At that point, you should have been beamed to the Crystal Tower by instantaneous kinesis. However, the machine exploded and Mr. Asman in fact perished? Yes, I can't deny that part of the experiment was a failure. I have known too many science people that talk like this. Blues, I also know too many science people that have talked like this. I mean, I'm also guilty of talking like this. You get me talking about my three things, and good luck shutting me up. That's why I made it my three things your problem, chat. 
So what you're saying is the large explosion that killed Mr. Asman was an accident, correct? But the big said you were arrested on suspicion of murder. I was responsible for a man's death. That is the immutable truth here. And for that, I wish to be punished. At once. But, uh... Murder? Never in a million years. It, it was an accident. Simply an accident. I see. Henry and I were talking this morning, you know. He said that the situation would change completely depending on whether it was treated as an accident or murder. How oh, exactly? Well, if it really was an accident, then the professor's machine would be kept in protective custody. On what grounds? Ah, uh, yes, it's newly established here in Britain. The Special Dispensation for Scientific Equipment Act. I should check this. I think it's fake. Dispensation for scientific equipment. I'm pretty sure this is fake, but let's check. Since we have the power, we might get a what year is it? Indeed, this is this is in fact fictional. That one passed me by. But if the case is treated as murder, then they'll say my machine was a murder weapon, and they'll be able to port over it as much as they like. If they examine it in detail, they'll find out how it's made, and then they'll be able to copy my idea. My precious hypothesis will be stolen. The machine must be protected from that at all costs. That's why it's imperative that as well it is shown to be up in an accident in tomorrow's trial. Ah, I see now. So in short, there was a terrible accident at the Great Exhibition Showground yesterday. Yes! Or rather, no. Uh, the devil is in the details. Strictly speaking, there was a terrible explosion. This sounds the same to me. You were demonstrating super high voltages and then using kinesis, weren't you? How fascinating. Uh, this dude. It gets revealed in a bit that the point of him coming here to the exhibition was in order to get grant money to further develop it to get a patent. This is experimental and not an actual new invention. Humans, like all matter, are made up of particles that are held together by electrical bonds. So it must be possible using a sufficiently high voltage to break those bonds and beam the particles through space. That's, that's it in a nutshell. That's my idea, you see? That's my amazing hypothesis. Gosh, that's unimaginably high-level science. Oh, but dare to imagine it! Dare to dream of such incredible technology! Just think, why not I could be here in the cell, and the next, I could be at the Great Exhibition again! Oh, yes, that would be incredible. And the next, in a mere blink of an eye, I could be at the Great Parisian Theatre, say. The possibilities are endless, the whole of our vast money would be within reach. So, no more hiding in wardrobes on rocky seas for 50 days? I don't really see it like that. What do you mean, Iris? Yeah, but if you could travel anywhere in the world instantaneously, the planet wouldn't seem really seem vast anymore, would it? I think you'll feel like it's shrunk. My word, that's that's exactly right. What are the implications? What does this mean? No, 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 hairbrain, 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 hairbrain. That's what's called social science. You don't have to think about that. Don't worry, you're a, you're a theoretical physicist. No one needs to. You don't need to worry about social science at all. Leave that to the social scientists. Don't try and math your way out of perception. Okay? Please. Please. You promise me, Harbin. Promise me you're not gonna write a thing piece trying to elaborate on the mathematical proofs behind the planet shrinking due to a sociological perception. Oops, that's called Professor Bunny Brain really worried about the look of it. Clearly, yet, this is yet another case of just because you can doesn't mean you should, I suppose. The point is, my calculations are flawless. The science works. Without a practical demonstration, it means nothing. And that's always the fly in the ointment. Ah, oh, sheesh. Because practical demonstrations cost a lot of money. Money that young scientists like you don't have. That's... that's exactly it, yes. 
Hurley's always complaining about it. He says the government should invest more in science. Well, anyway, I bumped into him at the right time. I bet the well known investor, Mr. Asman. Well, the virus apparently does a lot more engineering, clothing, cap lab, math, and reportedly chemistry. So I got a teleported mention, even though her degree is in medicine. What's stopping her from having multiple doctorates? She's already 10. That's, that's so much time. That's so much time. What are you talking about? That's 10 whole years of study. Imagine what she could accomplish. The victim who died in yesterday's terrible accident, you mean? The full name of the man who died in yesterday's accident was Mr. Odi Asman, wasn't it? What exactly was your relationship with the man? He, he first visited me in my laboratory in Germany a year ago now. He said that he wanted to invest in my immaculate hypothesis. I thanked my lucky stars. I see, so you hadn't really known each other until then. Money for scientific research? I'm so envious. You make a fortune writing, Iris. As far as I was concerned, the man was an angel. No, really? An archangel, even. He was prepared to fund a practical demonstration of my hypothesis for presentation at the Great Exhibition. I kept back my well, I could expect additional financial support from my research from the British government. Mr. Asman provided me with money and an exceptional engineer. He produced the machine to my precise specifications. But then your dreams were blown to dust in one enormous explosion. As you can see, I owed everything to Mr. Asman. I would never, ever have thought of taking a man's life. Uh, Magistrissa? I don't know what an angel investor actually even means, so... Yeah. Well, he seems genuine enough. I don't think he's lying. Uh, how could this have happened? You must feel awful. As well as a man losing his life, the crystal tower was greatly damaged, too. I know what happened! It must have been that! That? The day before the demonstration, I had my usual meal of Frankfurters at the hotel restaurant. When I paid the bill, they gave me three shillings too much in change. But instead of saying anything, I just slipped the coins into my pocket. They're still there now. It's a defined retribution for my wrongdoing. That's what this is. For a science, he has some very illogical anecdotes. Long and illogical. I see. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. We let's leave him alone then, because we seem to have done everything we have the power to do. And let's go take a look at Baron Fanzix and his office. Chat. If this is not exactly the office you thought it was. I don't know what your problem was. Oh, so this is the legendary Reaper's office? Yes, it appears so. Yeah, it sends a chill down your spine, doesn't it? What an amazingly deathly atmosphere. Oh, is that... That hooded figure was so still, I hadn't noticed his or her presence. I wonder who it is. What are you doing here? Yeah. He is as unwelcoming as I thought he'd be. Actually, maybe even more so. Oh, I am. Um, I'm glad to see you well. I am. So, who's the person over the wall being punished for assaulting a runner? No punishment is taking place here. Oh. That's my apprentice, and he's sitting there of his own free will. 
but they didn't know you had an apprentice. It must be the same person who was pictured in the newspaper. He's very able in combat. A requisite skill for anyone under my tutelage. Are you referring to the attack on the Reaper that was reported in the papers? As far as I know, the pieces are not tailored to red and blue with commission spiky heads, unlike Edgeworth. This is true. Because we don't actually ship we don't actually ship Edgeworth uh, or Van Zeeks at Rianosuke. Unlike correctly, right and Edgeworth. The Reaper? I'd be interested to know the Reaper's true identity myself. Assuming that it is such a fable fiend genuinely inhabits our great corporates. Alright. Chat, we're going to ignore him and look around. Because I want to irritate Ben Zeke's as much as possible. Because it is so funny. Look at that fine collection of hallowed chalices and bottles nearly wind up there. My hallowed bottles are filled with the essence of the finest grapes from the finest vineyards I visit. And I personally oversee these chalices being made by the finest crystal craftsmen in the world. And yet you throw them around in court like they were worthless. Yes, because this imbecile is so unimaginably and repeatedly wide of the mark sometimes. No! Before you open your mouth next time, you should consider the poor artisans whose work you defile. So, it's my fault. Uh, silly me, how could I have ever thought otherwise? Lord Van Zeek's desk. Look, it's so stylish. And that's a marble chest set behind it. Chest? That's the western version of a Japanese shogi game. Isn't it? You know, I'm actually quite good at shogi problems. Oh, really? You probably like chess problems in that case. I'd love to challenge Lord Van Zeke sometimes. To a bout of shogi problems. If you only really want to challenge yourself, you can always do that on your own at home. There's a lot of places that can make fine crystal this dude. Uh, Venice uh, and Milan would be two of the big ones, but certainly not the only crystal workshops. But I think it's safe to say that these are probably Probably French wines with Italian chalices. That makes sense to me. That portrait really dominates the room, doesn't it? It's a very majestic outfit and pose, but sadly, whoever painted it didn't do a very good job of capturing Lord Van Zeke's facial features. Yes, you're right, I mean, it's not part of. But the subject has exaggerated. The artist has exaggerated the subject's handsomeness, I think. No, that reminds me. I heard that Emperor Napoleon of France ordered artists to make him look more attractive when they painted him. How oh, vain. That's really not an attractive quality in a person, is it? That portrait does not depict me. Surely that's immediately obvious. <laughs> no, then who is it? He is so mad! <laughs> it's so funny! Oh look, it's scale model of the Great Exhibition Showground! That's amazing. I wonder why it's here. Perhaps he made it to take his mind off the sadness of being too busy to attend in person? Or perhaps he's too embarrassed to queue up for a ticket. Surely it's obvious that I'm using it as an investigative aid! <laughs> Yeah! You Nippanese have no business painting others as overly reserved. I really didn't think you'd ever hear that. It's so hilarious that Van Zeeks canonically works on this scale model with his apprentice in their completely ridiculous outfits. Just moving the little action figures around. It's perfect. I adore it. Hey chat. Jump scare. 
No! There were bats! Yes, the Reaper's familiar, I expect. But what about the mute man in the dark cloak? I thought he was the familiar. Just not the flying kind. She must be a dear friend of Mr. Reaper then. I think the familiar idea is more likely. And yes, scary though, either way. And yes, chat, they did jump scare you with bats. On the 3DS version of this game, when you have that stereoscopic 3D and they just blast some bats into your face. Because Van Zeeks is a vampire. It is known. But chat, you understand why I love him, right? Is it starting to become clear on my insistence that you will like Van Zeeks by the end of this game? How can you not love this? He's so salty. And we almost deserve it. Look at all those ancient casks lying below there. Casks in the Reaper's chamber? Oh no, they caskets? You you don't think. All those people escaped conviction according to lying inside them dead? Do you? What? Ridiculous notions are going through your head, man! This is my collection of fine vintages. No. Yes, of course. Thank you for cleaning that up. We were never just musing to ourselves. They'll find us, Mr. Reefer. I wouldn't if you hadn't invited yourselves to my office to talk nonsense within my earshot. Well, Barry Mike, he hasn't said what their vintage is. No, he actually did say they were wine. Never mind. He does call it a sanguine colored liquid. So it's hey, that's close enough, right? Cosmo, wait. <laughs> it really looks like a punishment to me. I've never seen someone sitting like this before. He hasn't moved a muscle since we arrived. Do you think perhaps he's dead? If he was dead right now, he wouldn't be sitting up, would he? Well, anyway, dead or alive, he's not overly approachable, is he? I don't think he's going to talk to us. He's not dead! Lord Stronghead said that the assault last night was some sort of revenge attack? True. Ter carried out by the henchmen of O.D. Asman's criminal organization. Their investigation meant their arrests were imminent. Presumably some hope to kill me before that happened. O.D. Asman. He's always masqueraded as one of London's most powerful financiers, a global investor. But his enormous wealth came to him by underhand means via his criminal activities. And he used that money to buy himself a verdict of not guilty when he found himself in court, didn't he? Being prosecuted by you, Mr. Reaper. But the man got his comeuppance in the end. Yesterday, in fact, in extraordinary circumstances. It was a most unusual cause of death. I, I know about that. It was super high voltage instantaneous kinesis gone wrong. Mr. Osman died when the demonstration on the public experimentation stage ended in an enormous explosion. Correct. How do you think I have some sort of divide ability to cause an accident like that to happen, do you? Well, no, that does seem a little far-fetched. If this man really is the fabled reaper, then he has to be innocent of this particular death, at least. It's strange how this has worked out, isn't it, right now? I mean, what are you taking on the professor's defense for the trial tomorrow? What? You're going to be defending him? Oh, yes, that's right. Though I barely know the man's yet, name yet, to be honest. Albert. Albert Herbert. That's right. Do you know him by any chance? Of course. He's a contemporary of mine. We were at university together. Yes. Yeah. What? I understood that Professor Herbrain was from Germany, though. Herbrain's from a respectable British family. After graduating from the University of London, he moved to Germany to carry out research. That's all. So, you were students together? I was in the faculty of law, of course, and he in science, so our paths rarely crossed. But, curiously, we got along. 
Well, though, I've not met him since my university days. I certainly did expect our next encounter to take this form. And with you, of all people, representing him. Ugh. Only if I make it out of this office alive. He's actually been charged with murder, it seems. Yes, I know. Because the prosecution will be handled by me. By you? But you made it sound as if you and the professor had been friends. We are friends, it's true. Then why would you do this? If the Reaper is the prosecutor, there's nothing anyone can do to save him. He's doomed. What's Lord Van Zeek's thinking? What do you mean by what you said before? If you'd like to know the Reaper's true identity, does that mean... I'm a crown prosecutor and mortal like any other. I'm no demigod. But they've all died, haven't they? The people you prosecuted, I mean. Whether or not the trial ended in conviction or an acquittal. Those I prosecute are the vilest wretches of our society. People who without question deserve to be found guilty. The world is a better place without them. But that's not true of Mr. Natsuma, for example. He wasn't a vile wretch at all. No, it's Ginny. In fact, she's ever so hard working now. I can't deny that since I encountered you, things have taken a turn. But the point is this. If any of those vile wretches that escaped justice subsequently died in mysterious circumstances, it was at their hand of their own kind. It's not my work. What Drongheart said the same. He believes you're not involved in any way. But you were attacked by those ruffians because they believe it's true. The fact is, since people started to call me the Reaper of the Bailey, the number of serious crimes in the capital has dropped substantially. Well, it would appear that even the most hardened criminals can be made fearful for their lives. Hey, look. Hey, look. It's the Victorian attitude toward prisons, encapsulated in a single person with a very dubious nickname. And Wolfie, what's your theory? What do you mean to say? I mean to say that my pseudonym serves a useful purpose. I adopt it gladly and with honor. But it's putting you in danger. You could be killed. If that is my fate, let God decide. You think it's Lord Strongheart? Lord Van Zeeks. Lord Van Zeeks, about the article in the paper. Ah, uh, yes. Since there was a reporter nearby when our little skirmish took place. I had no idea I'd been photographed. It was careless of me. By the way, shoutouts to his top hat. It looks as though it was taken after the people who attacked him had run away, though. Also, I, I really wish we had Van Zeeks in an alternate costume. I'll be honest, I, I really wish there was an alternate costume for Van Zeeks, just to see what absolute hilarity they come up with. But there's someone else fighting alongside you, it seems. And it's the same man who's sitting over there as we speak, isn't it? I know Magistrates are right, Van Zeeks be kinda styling. Van, Van Zeeks be kinda styling in that top hat. As I mentioned already, he's my apprentice. Perhaps you could tell us a little more about him? He's in my tutelage to become a prosecutor. So you could say he's my apprentice, I suppose. Ah, it's like you wasn't early then, you know? I don't remember taking an apprenticeship with a great detective. He's currently compiling a report about last night's attack. It looks like he's wearing some kind of mask? A Lord Strongheart's orders. Nobody knows the man's face, or indeed his identity. But why would you agree to take on such a clearly suspicious individual? Lord Strongheart's orders again. He's not one for meaningless follies. There will be a good reason for his actions. I hope you're right.
Да. The task is complete. Good. In that case, you can collate all the briefs. Nice to meet you. Back to work again. That was really strange though. I've never met the man before. I didn't even know he existed, and yet... Somehow it didn't feel like our first encounter. Don't bother trying to converse with him. He says nothing to anybody from outside this office. Lord Strongheart has strictly forbidden it. Oh. I see. Why are you so interested in my apprentice anyway? Hmm? Oh, no, I mean, sorry, I didn't mean to. The way he stood there so casually, yet with that flawless posture. It... it couldn't be. Ah, uh, yes, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. Don't... what's that? That Nipponese man. Is he faring well? Sorry? The one arrested twice in su succession six months ago. With the stoop. And the mustache. And the jeans. Oh, Mr. Nansama, you mean? I'm not sure you'd be very pleased to find out you'd identified him from that history now. He's fine, thank you. In fact, I received a letter from him by International Post only the other day. I see. Well. I think we can end our discussion then, don't you? There's little time left before tomorrow's trial. I advise you to spend it in investigating the case. Yes, thank you for the advice, and for the conversation. I can't believe he's asking after Sosakistan, after a Nepanese. I'm not sure whether to feel happy about that or worried. I never imagined that Mr. Reaper would be friends with the mad scientist, did you? That's a tenor for the books. A mad scientist? Oh, you mean Professor Herbert? Yes, it might be worth quizzing the professor about his relationship with Lord Van Zeeks, I think. Goodbye! Thank you for letting us pass through you! I understand Lord Van Zeeks is a friend of yours from your, your university days? Yes, that's right. He was studying law whilst still studying science. What was he like back then? Hmm, a good question. Unassuming, gentlemanly, an all-round nice fellow, really. Sorry, I... I think you misheard me? I'm talking about the cold-hearted, merciless prosecutor, Barok Van Zeeks. What was he like when he was at university? Uh, talk about a leading question, Reno. As I said, an unassuming and extremely pleasant gentleman. After all, he is the little darling of the Van Zeeks family with all his great aristocratic origins. Uh, I didn't realize he had quite such noble blood. The little darling? It was a bit of a shock when I came back to Britain and learned what he'd become. The Reaper of the Bailey, no less. Yes, that's right. I did hear, though, that there was a very big event in his life that completely changed him after graduation. Really? What sort of event? Ha! <laughs> I'm... I'm sorry. But I don't know anymore. I wasn't in the country at the time. I was in Germany already. Oh, yes, of course. If he isn't all about the Reaper, I really don't have the heart to tell him that Lord Van Zeeks will be the prosecutor in court tomorrow. So, Professor, let me just make sure absolutely sure I've understood you properly. The huge explosion that occurred yesterday, that was an accident, you're saying. You had no intent to harm the victim, who was in fact the sole investor in your work. Is that correct? As correct as two squared is four. I swear it. Yes, it's true that the man perished in a machine of my invention. So I know that I'm far from blameless in all this, but still, I would never use my discoveries, my inventions, to take a person's life, not a centillion years. I'm a man of science. That's all I know. You have to believe me, please. Do you believe me? Do you believe in my hypothesis? Science is the pursuit of truth, you know. I've always believed that all my life. I'm afraid I don't know much about science. What are your theories? 
But I do believe you, and I will fight to prove your innocence with all my might. I'm a man of the law, it's all I know. You have to believe me, please. When I went to live in Germany after I graduated, I learned something very important. Nationality, class, lineage, none of that matters. As long as you try your hardest, you can achieve anything. Thank you for that, Professor. I thank you in advance for defending me tomorrow in court. Alright, Rudo, it's time. Time to visit the Great Exhibition. Sorry? Well, that's something instant happened, isn't it? Chat, don't listen to the video game. The video... The video game has bad advice. Yes, I suppose that's true. Time to investigate at last. Second October, the Great Exhibition Grounds, foot of the Crystal Tower. Sad. Ugh. The showgrounds are a little too big for my liking. We've been walking around in dense crowds for two hours now, and I felt myself swooning three times. There are a lot of people out there. I've been almost trodden on three times, too. Be careful, won't you, Iris? Don't let go of my hands. We finally made it through the throngs, though, by the look of it. Here we are underneath the public experiment in, in, experimentation stage where the explosion happened yesterday. What's that? We can hear voices from up on the stage. It sounds like an argument. Right, I've had it with you this time. I'm warning you, I'll arrest you in a minute. Oh yeah, and get one back, give it a shot. You ain't got no evidence and you know it. You're right. I know those voices. You've got a cheeky little mouth on you, young lady, but not in the cells. We'll teach you some manners. Just try it, I dare you. If you want that big bag of chips around down your throat. Yoo-hoo! Brexy! What are you doing up there? Ah, it's you. Yeah, you're here. Here you are. You're here. Here, your ladyship. How are you, your ladyship? I can help you while you're there, your ladyship. Does that make her three times a lady? I'm not well at all. It's far too busy everywhere. I wanted to ride a balloon, but there was a three-hour queue. Unbelievable. I'm going to have a word for you, what's your ladyship. You will find a higher kind in no time once I pull some strings for you. Tobias Gregson, an inspector at Scotland Yard. Until recently he was suspended from duty, but it appears he's back in action now. He's actually quite well known, appearing as he does in The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes. And for that reason, he can't say a word wrong to the story's author, Iris. But there are limits, surely. Or well, there should be. Watch it, Sunshine. S sorry Oh, Gibson. Don't tell me you're on this case. Yes, I'm acting for the defense. So we're here to investigate. Mm. Dear me, that's the situation, is it? Is it really that troubling? Immediately five bob, is that all you got? You're a lawyer, ain't you? You can start to carry a bit more copper around in your pockets, Mr. Narado. Gina! I'd love for glow up. Uh, so, chat, what has happened with these two in the interim? is that Gregson uh, was suspended for duty for illegal dealings during a trial. But then as soon as he got put back on du duty, he uh, pulled some strings and got Jeannie Lestrade hooked up as his apprentice. I love when the game switches between narration and dialogue and the NPCs, NPCs get offended at your narration. Manchrissa, remember Hosanaga's sad face at the he didn't really do much at the end of game one case one? Poor Hosanaga. Do I? Hey, that's my last bit of spending money, that is! You can have it back, but I'll just charge you from the border. Three bob. This is Gina Lestrade, a pickpocket or diver born and bred in the east end of London. 
In the case that led to my own suspension, suspension six months ago, this is the young girl I was defending in court. What's your problem, eh, Eleanor? Diver, pickpocket, what's with all the name calling? You won't buy the chips around on your throat, Eleanor, do you? No. I thought you were proud to be a diver, Gina. You were just arguing with Inspector Grayson about them, weren't you? I assumed you'd been up to your usual tricks here at the showground. I ain't no way to talk to a lady, are there? Abby is a long time. People can change. I'm an apprentice now, meant to be a scholar yard detective. Too little to call me what everyone else does. It's Inspector Lestrade now. We stand, Mr. Tur Turtle. Plus the dog and lesson. Hey. Hey. Magistrissa, the man has fatal plot disease. Give him a break. In Inspector? That badge is homemade, surely. Hey, Inspector part isn't entirely accurate. No one calls it that. For what it's worth, anyway. Investigating is off the cards for all of us. What's that supposed to mean? Right, well, I'll be back up top. You hold the fort down here, alright? Right, right, sir. This... This raises a lot of questions. Uh, Wolfie, they became more expensive two weeks ago because I simply... I'm not able to universally uh, come up with spicy takes for so many times during a trip, so... They were getting used a bit much, and so the price went up a bit. Supply and demand, you know. Artificial, artificially restricting supply for no discernible benefit except maybe my own. Gina, what are you doing? It was eight months ago now that I first encountered Gina in connection with a case I was working on. At the time, she was living in the East End with a group of other orphans. She helped all of them survive by pickpocketing, but then she got embroiled in a murder. I had a lot of time to think in prison. I realized I couldn't go on like I was, but I even weren't working out. Oh, I'm so pleased to hear it, Ginny. Well done. So you went from being a pickpocket to a detective? You got it. Got it in it. It's back at the strut. Sounds like something out of a book, eh? Fourth wall, where are you? Talking about a sea change. And then there's Iris' old man to think about. Iris' father, you mean? Yeah, I promised her, didn't I? I said I'd get all the police force around the world to pull out all the storms looking for him. Just a small promise then, nothing serious. Oh, Ginny, you're so sweet. Anyway, that's why I had to go at the test for Scotland Yard. Only trouble is, I don't read so well, do I? Just a small problem, nothing serious. And that's when Hurley approached Gracie and asked for help. So the inspector said he'd take full responsibility for Ginny and made her a sort of apprentice. That was very magnanimous of Inspector Gregson. And brave. Well, you know Hurley. He enjoys finding ways to make people do what he wants. The great detective likes digging for dirt, in other words. So, the long and short bit is, if you've got questions about the case, you can ask Inspector Lestrade. Right then, Inspector. Actually, there's still a big mystery surrounding Gina, isn't there? Who what, Reno? What? Well, six months ago, Gina was the defendant in a trial prosecuted by the Reaper. A trial in which she was found not guilty. And yet, here she is still. Come on, you know still all about that whatever. The regular Reaper, or whatever it's called. Go on, don't you have where you order? But then to have there probably wouldn't be a whole lot of you left. It's like I told you before, eh? The Reaper's kind of like him upstairs, so he knows what I'm like on the inside, but I ain't really done nothing wrong. Nothing wrong about me stretching a point. What about Mr. Natsume in Japan? He's perfectly fine, isn't he? Well, that's true. Perhaps the Reaper is more discerning than I thought. Exactly! So I'm worried I'm totally fine. Oh, it was out of this world, it was. The brave bird pulled a bunch of levers on his machine and suddenly started billowing smoke. They just went. Oh, I ain't seen a better experiment here yet! Sorry? You mean, you saw Ginny with your own eyes? Yeah, of course. The boss is in charge here, ain't he? Of keeping everything running smooth, I mean. The boss being Inspector Grayson, I suppose. 
That's going to take some getting used to. So all I have to say is that I'm on duty and I can do whatever I want to. Get this, I was up in one of the flying balloons when, I, when it happened, watching it from above. No, you're so lucky, Jenny. Maybe I should join Scotland Yard too. Yeah, do it. You know how to pull the balls in this place already, right, Iris? You have no trouble at all. But it's settled. When do I start? No, no, no. You can't join Scotland Yard, Iris. We'll see. Anyway, what I don't understand is this. If the machine explodes so spectacularly, how can Professor Bunnybrain still be claiming this experiment was a success? Uh, right. Well, it was a success, in a way. It was? But how can it have been? Surely after the whole machine blew up, no one could call the experiment a success. It's like I said, it did sort of work. I mean, yeah, there was a low smoke and all that whopping great bang. Where do you think they found the victim's body, eh? In the crystal tower over there. You what? In the tower? You can see for yourself, can't you? Up there, up on the scaffold. No. Oh. Oh, well, the glass is broken, you mean? Yeah, the cage the victim got in to start with really did get beamed through the air whatever and landed all the way over there. So, you see, it did kind of work, didn't it? You what? I, I don't believe it. I mean, I don't get the ins and outs of this, but everything's plausible, right? With science? Oh, I tell you what, you can have this. It's a plan of the experiment they drew about the yard. Oh, are you sure? Yeah, go on. I had three bobs off here before, so fair's fair. Yes, I didn't actually give that to you before, did I? Something Inspector Grayson said before seemed a little strange. What was where they went? Investigation is off the cards for all of us. Yes, not your Gracie ran off after that without explaining himself. Uh, right, fine. Also, no one's. Nope. Also, no one's allowed to investigate that wee machine what blew up yesterday. Well, that's not fair. We're representing the defendant. In that case, can you at least all see learn from your investigations? Nah, you're not getting it. We ain't allowed to investigate neither. Why? What did the boss call him again? The forensic investigation team, I think. Anyway, but from then on, no one's allowed to lay a thing on the seat. Bit funny, ain't it? So even Scotland Yard's own detectives can't investigate. Yes, I've never heard something like that before. I thought I could have a gander on the fire though, but the boss caught me at it. He probably didn't give me an earful about over for or from down here, did he? It's not completely fair. I think you were giving him as much of an earful back as I remember it. Yeah, well, sometimes I think it's all them chips that make him so stubborn. You say something to him, Mondo. Go on, see if you can get through to him. He's up on the platform above us, is he? Where the machine that exploded is? We can try, can't we, for now? Crazy will listen to us. Oh, yes. Lord Strongheart Special Investigation Forensic Team. Get to be in charge. Oh, look, what's this? A ripped piece of cloth. Hmm, it's not like any fabric I've ever seen before. It's very thick and stiff. It looks extremely durable. It's canvas, I think, with some sort of rubber backing. And the edges appear to be a bit charred as well. Maybe that means it has something to do with the explosion. Let's make a note of it while Jenny's made yawn. For some reason, the ground is damaged in this spot. Look, it looks as if there was a fire here or something. Yes, if you look closely, there's some scattered ash and burnt embers too. Well, I suppose there was a big explosion just about here. Strawberry J, hello. There's not a blues. There's absolutely not. This is something the game has made up uh, as a prototype for the also fictional convention. That Lord Strongheart made up. We, uh, you may have noticed we're getting very much into the uh, plot shenanigans and a little bit less into the weird historical references and or Herlock Sholmes cases. People probably wouldn't find an island at a small fire like this. Like this would have been. I'm not sure we English are quite bad laid back right now. 
what did you what did you miss in this case so far? Okay, so the story so far is that uh, you've actually missed two cases, but neither of them are actually that important, really. We got to see Suzata be a lawyer, uh, which was very funny in Japan. We got to see uh, Sosaki Nasuma get accused of murder a second time, this time in a flashback, and the last time Uh, we, uh, or we have now back in the present, we were banned from the courtroom practice for six months following Mr. Posh telling government secrets. Uh, so now it is now October, and the Great Exhibition is open, and so we are now at the Great Exhibition of 18... Uh, we're gonna say 99, even though it's actually 51, but also 99. Uh... Investigating an explosion in a high-voltage instantaneous kinesis machine that caused the death of the totally unsuspiciously named Mr. Odious Man. Also, we visited Baron Van Zeke's office and it is a, and uh, asked him annoying questions, so we got very mad at this. Really, that's all that's important that's happened. We the most important thing is that we visited. Uh, Baron Van Zeke's office and asked a bunch of really stupid questions and he got very annoyed at us and I had a great time doing it. Oh, it looks as though somebody dropped something behind the tree just here. Dropped or hit? What is this? Some part of the machine that exploded? Maybe it could have fallen from the platform above in the blast perhaps. What's going on here? Oh, nothing. I think I'll hang on to this just in case. The Crystal Tower. It certainly is an apt name. It was built to be the focal point of the exhibition, and it definitely is being so tall and with all that glass. I can't imagine a building like this ever being erected in Japan. There are lots of exhibits inside the tower as well, apparently. Of course, there's an observation deck, there's also an art gallery, a zoo, and a museum. This is, of course, referencing the Crystal Palace of 1851, which did in fact have all those things. And they uh, promptly burned out after the exhibition. You may notice this will become a trend in World's Fairs that things will get uh, burnt out not very long after the exhibition. But well, you have to be queued for three hours just to get through the doors. Well, at the moment, the shadowgraphs from the failed experiment may well be the biggest draw. And thanks to the accident, the whole tower is shut. Suddenly, it's not the Crystal Tower anymore, but the Crystal Flash Shower. Apparently everyone's taking the skies now to look down on the disaster area from above instead. And there's a three hour queue to go up in the balloon now. One of those must be very patient people. That's what the cave ended up after his instakinesis or whatever they called it. Dead of course. And yet they're calling the experiment a success? What's the wooden scaffold there for? The golfers, our lads, set that up after the incident happened. We had the body down, I think. Didn't I, really? Didn't you help to erect the scaffold then? Nah, I'd look at these more, I think. When you're around the exhi exhibit, I keep a look out for the fun stuff. Man, Gregson doesn't hear you saying that, or he'll give you the boot. It's incredible, though, isn't it? I mean, could the victim really have bridged that gap by some sort of invisible kinesis? Balloons. Oh, I've been meaning to ask you for a while now, but what are those funny round balls floating in the sky? Oh, they're the flying balloons I've been talking about. I took over one so much. Um, I've heard about situations like this in the magazine about strange phenomena. C creatures from outer space coming in round flying objects t t to attack Earth. Uh, well, this is before War of the Worlds, by the way. Maybe. Definitely maybe. Right, I mean, the problem is that, right, Jules Verne and H.G. Wells are both writing in, within the bounds where it's not clear if this is before or out there, before or after the game took place. But that means we are also around the, somewhere around the establishment of the weird stories. Let, let's look up when weird stories was actually founded. I have that power. So 
St uh, Weird Tales started in 1923. Uh, but yes, War of the Worlds is 1897, which puts it squarely, perfectly, in the time frame of the game. And some of Vern's stuff is even earlier than that, though he has less aliens coming to Earth and more people going to space and time traveling and mysterious islands and, you know, Jules Verne stuff. And going spelunking in a, ex uh, a partially extinct volcano in Iceland and ending up in a hollow Earth ocean dinosaur space. You like to think he was reading Margaret Cavendish's The Blazing World? Good choice. What? I suppose other inhabitants of other planets are boldly interested in the Great Exhibition. This is it, Iris. It's happening. It's not. Don't worry. I'll find out to you later. I'll have a nice cup of tea for now. This platform must have been set up for the experiment, I suppose. It's very high up. About 30 feet above the ground, apparently. That's what the policeman I just bet you said. I don't really understand feet very well. We don't use them in Japan. And then again, Chan Princess Kaguya is a thousand percent a space alien story. True. True. Wait, why are we talking about aliens? Because Tsuriya Nosuke doesn't understand hot air balloons. Only space barb. That is the sum total of the reason uh, Ryanosuke does not understand the hot air balloons. Yeah, but Magistrissa, the problem is the round object. Right. I mean, yeah, the full moon is a round object, but uh, the specific thing of creatures from creatures plural from outer space coming in round objects to visit Earth is very, very much more Western than it is Japanese. Oh, yes, sorry, it's about nine meters. But soon you'll have been in London a year, Bruno. It's time you got used to our measurements. Yes, well... And this thing is so tall, the spectators at the front would just have seen a wall and nothing else. They probably thought they'd secure the best spot to watch from, only to be disappointed. There's a saying in Japan. The darkest spot is right under the lighthouse. I feel like it probably applies here. Oh. I do need to examine here. These stairs obviously lead to the stage above. We should go up there and investigate the exact spot where the experiment was being conducted. So that's it then? Is it the machine that blew up? Well, it must have been a magnificent explosion. And I've seen my fair share. You've seen things like this before, you mean? Of course! Hell is always doing experiments that end in a bang. The fact is, in words, explosions are the very essence of chemistry. No, that might explain the smell of burning that frequently comes wafting up the stairs. One time he made something that exploded with such force it took the roof off the building. I wish you'd been there to see her, Bruno. It's hard to get too excited about that, given that I now live in the roof. Well, anyway, that's enough about that. It's time to investigate. No, it's not. Uh, look, Inspector Gregson is over there. He seems to be deep in thought about something. We'll iron up the machine carefully. Really? He just looks confused to me. Okay, but this is a great time to talk about the everything else because we can see other things now. Most notably, there are all sorts of strange buildings here in the Great Exhibition Grounds, aren't there? I seem to remember something similar being exhibited in Japan one time. Let's check on that. Let's check on that. Oh, 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah, there totally is. Oh, in your country, Bruno, I do wish I could go and see it. Let's see if there was a more recent one. Yeah, there are... Neat. Okay. So, realistically, what he's probably referring to here is, uh... Do, 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 do. Where is it? I just had it. Where did it go? Uh, it might be the 1877 First National Industrial Exhibition in Tokyo. More likely, it's the second na uh, National Industrial Exhibition. Where's the exact name for it? Come on. Where did it go? I just had it. There it is. Yep, the second National Industrial Exhibition. It at Uena in Tokyo. He's 24 in the game, which means that he was born in the 1870s. So yeah, he's probably thinking about the 1884 exhibit, which is the second time there was a World's Fair in Japan. So, World's Fairs as a phenomenon technically start at the end of the 18th century. The first one was actually held in Prague in the 1790s, but they rapidly expand and become a thing where pretty much everyone who wanted to be somebody was competing to show off their industry. They're also a phenomenon that is actually still ongoing. There are actually, uh, well, COVID may have killed them, um, to be honest, but there was one... Actually, I think there is one this year that got rescheduled from 2020. Which is neat. Um, but yeah. We do have a little bit of a what year is it because... I present a particularly silly samurai with a present of one of Hurley's stories of written especially. See if I can get Hurley into, uh, into a jam against some uh, Bartitsu Master Ninjas. Duff. You might not find as many of those sorts of people around as you think. Oh, well that's dull. Oh, but I do know a prosecutor of a Chon Maje top knot I could introduce you to. A Chon Maje, really? You think I could have my picture take with him, do you? Assuming he could is recovered from the trim Kazuma gave him a year ago, yes. Steel Samurai reference! Yay, Steel Samurai! But yes, anyway, we actually have a little bit of a what year is it, uh, because all these strange looking buildings would actually not be attested uh, in either of the Japanese World's Fairs. Because these are what are known as uh, National Pavilions. Specifically, uh, though the styling it makes it honestly very hard to tell, the Ottoman Empire and the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Why these two? I don't know, but that's fine. Don't even worry about it. Um, the first one to have these sorts of national pavilions was the 1893 Colombian Exposition in Chicago, Illinois. So the one in, eight, one in 1884 would not have these national pavilions. Or 1881? Yeah. Uh, sorry, yes, you are right. 1881. Yes. Uh, you think the domes are supposed to be the ones in St. Petersburg? I wish that was true. It would make more sense. But, the, uh, in the title card for the case clearly lists the four major things. The Crystal Palace and then, uh, the Ferris Wheel and the two big pavilions. And they specifically say it's Ottoman and Austro-Hungarian. I don't know what to say. The, the, I agree with you that it's weird and doesn't really make a lot of sense, but that is that is what the text actually says. But yes, the Onion Dome is far more Russian Orthodox style. Onion hats are more Ottoman style. Eh. So be it though. 
Oh, that's a Ferris wheel. There'll be people riding inside those little cabins, you see. Do I? Well, they don't think nice and slowly, so it's a wonderful way to see the surrounding scenery. Right. It's turning? But it looks completely still. Yes, that's because it's turning so st slowly. One complete revolution takes a half an hour. If you were mad enough to go on one, it would be more fun to whiz around fast, don't you think? I feel as though you may have just invented a new sort of ride there, Bruno. ripped itself apart magnificently, didn't it? Magnificently and mercilessly. So someone stands in the middle of the machine to be disassembled and then beamed through the air? Yes! Beamed, not blasted, that's the point. Yes, that part's crucial, really. Is something like that even possible though, Iris? Oh, Bruno, I'm just a child, how should I know? A child when it suits you, you know. I can tell. I think if you had to pull this up. Stop! Don't touch that! <laughs> that was practically instantaneous kinesis the way you flew over just now, Gregsy. Please, your ladyship. I didn't mean to start you, but I can't let you touch anything up here. So sorry, you have some of my special blend to make up for it. Oh, wonderful. This stuff really is wonderful. Just like all times this is. We representing a Professor Herbrain and Quartermore Inspector, so we should be allowed to examine the scene. Ha! Ah, listen, Sunshine, even I'm not allowed to touch anything up here. Here's that blast of special dispensation for scientific equipment afterwards. It's driving me party. Oh, yes, the special dispensation. The professor mentioned that too. Not red tape's all we need. I know what the government thinks is playing at sometimes. But, we're allowed to just look, aren't we? Yeah? Surely that's right, isn't it, Gregsy? Alright, Dildrum. Have a good night, my friend. Have a good sleep. Where's your ladyship? Anything you say, your ladyship. But please don't get your taking hands dirty, will you? Don't worry. We wouldn't dream of touching anything, would we, Bruno? She really knows how to guess what she wants. Using high voltage electricity to somehow disassemble a man's body, then beam him across to the Crystal Tower. It's an extraordinary thing to attempt, especially in public. Trip. It's by far the most unusual of the experiments planned for the exhibition mine. To be honest, I'm a bit surprised it was allowed. Carrying out something so dangerous with so many spectators present around. The government's doing everything it can to promote new science and technology of the moment. I'm more worried about being ahead of the game than the odds by the public's safety infringements. If they can be the first to develop some new technology, it makes Britain more powerful in the future, you see? Yes, I suppose that's true, in a way. So the powers of VR are placing a heavy emphasis on scientists' rights at the moment. What sort of rights? Making this the right theories the brains have retained their legal property, as it were. Hey, look, it's copyright. Right through development and into a practical idea and even going into production. Which is the infuriating reason us coppers aren't allowed to touch this crime scene. This is an extremely exaggerated well form of uh, copyright and trademark. There's a new highfalutin special dispensation for scientific equipment act forbids it. Oh, I see now. The only people who can investigate here are some, from bra some brand new department at the yard. The Forensic Investigation Team is called. We've been relegated to keep in guard. The Forensic Investigation Team? Any old fool can see that this heap of scrap metal was a sham to begin with. Just because it says scientific equipment on the paperwork can't do a flaming thing with it. Poor Briggsy, he's very head up, isn't he? I think that's a typo, but I don't know what's a typo too. Do you remind me again? What's this new legal act that means we're not allowed to touch the scene here? Are you having me out? It's sunshine. It's a special dispensation for scientific equipment act. Hmm. Yes, I think Haley mentioned that recently. Real twinkling as long as I can remember. I'm sure you did, your ladyship. I'm sure you did. Past especially for this great exhibition that was. How oh, yes, is anyone in this game? Well, there's the only thing I can think of. 
It's totally not that. How mad is anyone in this game? Also, I just have to use Commander ID's own inventions in some suits in the civil service, and if I get a proper staff, there's a guarantee of rights to maintain the invention's confidentiality. What does that really mean? Hey, Commander. Think of all the world changing new inventions on display every day of this exhibition. And they're good to have the world cobblers, if you ask me, but more by shamers like yourself. Thanks for that. Oh, I love how obsessed how the inventions here are. It's all so fun. A lot of fun to you, but a member of the force has to be present in every single demonstration. Can you imagine that? Thanks, science. That's what I say. Oh, I don't think so. That sounds like my dream job. You said they got otherwise after spending the day guarding all these shadows, bogus contraptions. But if they're all bogus, how can anyone help to demonstrate them? There'd be no point. Yeah, well, there is a point, sadly. Sorry. Thanks for another of our government's bright ideas. In any theory of the inventions deemed to show potential, the government hands out a research grant. The scientists get funding? Exactly. And that's what they're all after. All these shammers coming from far away to clog up high carp. And it was to keep them all safe out. You guys smile politely and welcome them. Us coppers, that's who. So you can see why I say it now, can't ya? Hang it, science. Hang it. Oh, maybe I can see your point. Apparently, Professor Herbrain lives and works in Germany now conducting his research. That's right, came back to Britain, especially for the Great Exhibition, as I understand it. Probably after one of the government's research grants. Actually, we learned something else about the Professor earlier today. Around his time in further education. It turns out he was at university with someone we both know. Lloyd Van Zeeks. Ah! What's that? That's new to me. But, but Van Zeeks mans the prosecution. That's the accused. The professor's fate is... Sealed? Because the Reaper will get him one way or another? Bloody. That must be on me. I know what goes on in that head of his. Talking about things, this morning's paper around the story of him being attacked. Read that? Oh yes, but Mr. Reaper is completely fine, nothing to worry about. Yeah, right. I'm glad to hear it. Still, the Reaper, huh? How long is that business gonna keep up, I wonder? The victim of this case, the investor, Mr. Asma. He was a number of the Reaper's victims, or well, so I heard. More. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chad. Lord Barry Van Zeeks is a top class prosecutor, but even he can't always push the right verdict through. Sometimes justice can't win. Yes, I've heard about jurors being bribed and evidence being falsified, and that's how the notion of the Reaper of the Bailey came about, isn't it? Alright, Blues. Get rest. We will be back later, or we'll probably still be here later. Obviously, Scully are suspected of Zeke's initially. We all assumed he would take matters into his own hands if he failed to seal a deal in court. Although the man himself denies that charge. Well, we've done a very thorough investigation, and the conclusion we reached is that Lord Zeke's is in no way related to the deaths of those people outside the court. And no question in my mind. I stake no reputation on it, I was. But if that's true, then how do you explain it? All those defendants couldn't have j just have coincidentally died if nobody killed them. I know that, but I can't explain it. It is a mystery after all, isn't it? That's the whole point of the Reaper. But Professor Herbrain mentioned something else. He said that at university, Lord Van Zeeks was a totally different person. Easy guard and kind. You are. He said that it was after they both graduated that something happened to change the man. Do you have any idea what it was? No clue. Really? Look, I've got my hands full watching over this frustrating crime scene. Why don't you go and make a nuisance of yourselves elsewhere, eh? Considering how badly damaged everything is, Professor Henry was lucky to escape unscathed death today. We should have a good look around the machine while we can, sir. Don't touch anything, I'll make sure I'll kill you before I get strung up myself, do yeah? I won't touch a thing, I promise, so please, spare the thoughts for your digestion! Anyway, do you really think this machine could actually disassemble people like the Professor claims? Yes, looking totally incredulous. Give you rest, Sunshine. We're allowed to examine all this bleeding scrap, I don't think we could answer that question. But we can't, can we? Because of the annoying grills, you know? 
Exactly. The annoying obstructive flaming rules. No, look at the base of the machine there. Oh, yes, there's a tool of some kind poking through the fire mesh. It's a screwdriver, I think. Well, isn't it a lovely one? I thought it was in the shape of a capital letter A. Who's this? Oh, yes, you're right. What's the matter with you? Don't touch anything, I said. Touch anything? I'm make sure I kill you before I get stronger myself, I said. Yes, yes, I understand. Sorry. Let me touch it a teeny wee bit. The brakes here. I'm very curious about this screwdriver. Really, very, very curious. Of your ladyship. You're so clever, your ladyship. Fancy spawning something like this? You, I mean. But I'm afraid I can't let you have it. But Rena found it first. I assure you I'll investigate it thoroughly. He's gone off with it. That was very mean. I'm afraid Dr. Gregson is going to make a very clumsy embarrassing mistake in next month's installment now. Oh, Gregson. Right, are you done here, Mr. Alberto? Sorry? Isn't it about time you were leaving? Or rather, it is about time you were leaving. That law are you now? The that book? The forensic investigation team. They'll be giving me the key forward in a minute, too. Oh dear, poor Briggsy. Here, have another cup of my special blend to cheer you up. Ah, that is the spot. Yep, it's it every time. Well, at least I seem to see with my own eyes. It looks like this is going. To, uh, this is as far as we're going to get with our investigations here, at least. I've been thinking. Then they might know something, mightn't they? About what? About Mr. Reaper. About what happened to Lord Van Zee, you mean? This is not something very significant occurred after he graduated from the university. Something that completely changed his life. Maybe, but I have no idea where to find Mr. Shons at the moment. He's in the middle of some big case, isn't he? Yeah, this is what you need. So what's this? Some kind of... Entrance ticket? Madame Two Spells? Is this supposed to mean something to me? You don't know it? It's the most popular attraction in London at the moment. It's very close to Baker Street, actually. We could get now if you like. It is actually in a, the, the first time ever for this game, chat. It is actually close to Baker Street. I've walked that walk. It's only it's only about a mile. And it's very pleasant. There's a park on the far side that goes that cuts straight across. Assuming of course it's not Madame Two Spells, you mean Madame Two Swords. On Merlebub. No, no, we don't have time for visiting attractions today, Iris. We have a big trail tomorrow. But that's where Hurley is. What? At, at this popular London attraction? Yes! How is it that you know where he is? Hurley told me. They told me to keep it a secret from you, Rudolph. Not on two spells? I don't see how it could be related to the case we're investigating here, but then... Stranger things have happened. And when they happen, Mr. Sholmes is usually at the heart of them. Anyway, before we move on to Madame Tussauds, uh, a little bit more about World's Fairs. Specifically, the National Pavilions. Uh, the National Pavilions uh, sound great, to be honest, right? A really cool thing, kind of bridging the gap between purely industrial expositions, which was what would hap happened uh, prior to that point, mostly. Uh, and instead, starting to really highlight different countries uh, about cultural heritage uh, and individual innovations. This turned the Chicago Midway in Hyde Park, uh, Chicago, into like a, a full several miles of pavilions. The most uh, popular one, and the most famous one, was the Egyptian one, which had a whole bunch of stuff actually. Do 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 do. Uh, let's see. Uh, so yeah, just had a plaster exterior wall. Inside the gate, visitors saw uh, shops, houses, a cafe, the solemn spectacle of a mosque, two obelisks, a temple of Luxor, and a much-talked-about theater where there were belly dancers. And 
and uh, Chicago Tri Tribune reporter argued that the Egyptian quarter on the midway had the picturesque beauty and traces of Masar al Khalika, as the natives termed the famous uh, city, which lies now near the site of old Babylon. But yes, there was also an Ottoman one, with a mosque, and a dome, and the business street of Constantinople. And yeah. There was also replicas of Columbus's ships uh, in Lake Michigan, and a long ship that was sent over, mostly to troll the form of things. It's kinda oof. They are extremely cool. Right, in some ways they're extremely cool, and they're so dramatic that they actually get it, the whole thing gets called the White City. Uh, and so of course, uh, perhaps more relevantly uh, for the purposes of this game, there was a serial killer active in the White City during the Columbian Exposition. Yay, his name was H.H. H. Holmes. A significantly less fun homes. Yeah. Uh, targeted visitors at the Corbin Exposition, and I don't remember exactly how many um, kills he had, but it was uh, a lot, and he became very notorious. So, regrettably, right, the idea of crimes, including severe murders being committed during the Columbian Exposition is not all that a, a historical for the game, uh, though the exact method here obviously is. Also, something we, we will not get to see in the game, but is very much an issue, is that it will all burn down. The Columbian Exposition burned down. The Crystal Palace burned down. Parts of the 1867 Columbian or World's Fair in Paris burned down. You may notice a pattern here. There's a lot of wooden buildings and a lot of waste produced, and no very good way of dealing with that waste. And that means that, uh, both by accident and by arson, uh, they get lit on fire. Now, that doesn't mean they didn't do nothing. Uh, while we're moving on, we can take a look at that. Um... I've actually gone to handle the fire analyst. Uh, it's an, at the Newberry Library in Chicago for the Columbian Exposition, and so they color coded every building in the exhibit or in the exhibition based on what it was made of and how close it was to uh, fire sources. This did not help, and the only building that survives from the Columbian Exposition of 1893 is the Museum of Science and Industry that was built for the Columbian Exposition, and since it was nice and stone, uh, and also lucky, it survived, even though uh, the one across the way on the point, the, uh, I believe it was the Philadelphia Hall, did not survive. Womp womp. And now, 22nd October, Madame Tuspel's Museum of Waxworks. What is this place? Look at all these terrifying scenes. But why are all the people so still? Guillotines, ruthless murderers, I know what I'll be dreaming about tonight. They're all wax models! They're amazingly realistic, aren't they? What do you think, Reno? Shocked? Wax models? Ah! Well, you read about the dead bodies on wax ones in the magazine about strange phenomena. Depending on how c corpses are kept out of death, parts of them can turn to wax, apparently. It's called ad 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 adipocere. Stop talking about creepy things like that, Reno. You're scaring me. Anyway, adipocere doesn't form specifically. Aha! Uh -huh. What's now? I've, I just remembered something else I read in another magazine about strange phenomena. Rianosuke. You're supposed to be reading... 
you're, you're, you're supposed to be reading law books, not magazines. There was an old lady, maybe a witch, who used to pour multiple marks over corpses and put them on display. None of the exhibits in here are real. They're all entirely man-made replicas. But can't be. Do you really expect me to believe that? Just look at them. There's no way anybody can make models of people that are this realistic. And they're all such gruesome scenes. Wait. What is it? Oh, no, I must be seeing things. Well, let's take a look at our ser serial killer, shall we? Is this some infamous murderer? Yes, called Jane the Ripper. All her victims were young women. I know it, you can tell her she's holding a knife. She does not have a murderer. <laughs> yes. What's the matter, Reno? I fucked it out. I know what she's doing. She's trying to fill the bathtub with blood so she can have a soak in her victim's gore. Um, not according to the information about the exhibit on the little board here. M anything about the bathtub. Really? Sorry, don't think it's significant. So, obviously the bathing in blood of young women in a bathtub is a reference to Elizabeth Bathory. The name is a reference to Jack the Ripper. Elizabeth Bathory was not active in this time period. Jack the Ripper sure as heck was. I still think it has to be there for a reason. These models are so well made, I can't tell what's a waxwork and what's a real human. Well, maybe all the exhibits are real people. As clothing come and all the visitors have gone home, they just suddenly start moving about. Iris, how dare you steal the brilliant idea for Night at the Museum? A hundred and something years before Night at the Museum. Come on. Ugh. Just thinking about it makes me wish I was closing them already and I was on my way home. Is this an arm? It looks like an arm, doesn't it? Maybe one of the works of flowers has gone over. You don't think it could be the work of one of the mass murderers in here, do you? Bruno, stop scaring me! Is it a wax one or a real one? Come on, you always bring that figure of yours in court. Put it on now and see how it feels. Dejection! That big heavy curtain is in a very prominent position, isn't it? I have a nasty feeling there's going to be something truly terrifying behind it. Oh yes! That's the famous Dispel Special Exhibit! The one being the most notorious killers. Do you want to pay the extra fee and have a look? Pay more money? To be even more terrified? Oh, let me think about that for a moment. It was only a suggestion. Okay, okay. Waxworks is only 1934. Mystery of the Wax Museum is 1933. So we're nearly 30 years ahead of time instead of 120. Fine. Fine, fine, fine. Hey Chad, it's a stepladder. Oh, that's a funny place for a little ladder. What is it? Is something wrong? No, it's just that in Japanese we have a totally different word for a ladder that falls in half like that. We do in English too, you know. It's a stepladder, or just steps. So be careful making assumptions about other cultures, Reno. That's how wars are started. And by wars, I mean multiple gay long feuds about stepladders. I didn't realize that the stepladders were an international point of contention. But the writer makes an astute point. Only in Japan, California. Reynosuke, you don't need to worry. It's only in Japan, California that we have to worry about this. Is this an example of Western Tsuchigiri? I don't know what that is. You know, when an unscrupulous samurai 
Randomly attacks a passerby to test the sword? I still don't know. But actually, a waxwork samurai would probably be hugely popular. Could you model if you think, Reno? Doing that Tsuchi... Tsuchi Kiri thing you mentioned? Well, I do have a sword. I have no intention of set testing how sharp it is on a human subject. For now, at least. It's Jack the Ripper, by the way. This one is actually Jack the Ripper. Anyway, should we ask? It's it's the great detective, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. Mr. Sholmes has his own wax statue in here. Really? Well, he is one of the famous after all. It's an uncanny resemblance, isn't it? It makes my skin cross to look at it. I know. Well, look, Reno, you can kick this early yet he doesn't move a muscle. <laughs> Jacques the Ripper. <laughs> you can't go around kicking the exhibit, Cyrus. Wait. It it just moved, I'm sure. And not just a little bit either. Really? Did it? Look closely. There are beads of sweat on the face of this wax model. Sh shall we move on, Iris? Over there, look. There's a great murder scene to enjoy. Hold it. My dear fellow, I take exception to your recording in such a manner as if you've seen something truly abhorrent. But Mr. Sholmes. I knew it. Iris, what possessed you? I strictly forbade you from divulging my temporary waxwork secret to you, Mr. Narahodo. Temporary waxwork? What do you mean? And that kick! Could you not have exercised a little more restraint? You winded me! Iris is such a little shirt, she knew we was here then. Reno has something he needs to ask you! Oh, a question? I thought you'd probably be getting bored too. So here we are. Well, can't deny that your time was impeccable. I mean, two minutes more being stationary like that, and my great braid upon which all my success had been built would have turned to wax. Thank goodness we arrived in time. Indeed. In many ways, the pair of you just saved the world from an unimaginable loss. Oh, Hilly, you do like to talk nonsense, thank you. You could not sound like it's true. About Lord Van Ziggs and what happened in the past to change him. Now that you're here, let's take a time. How can I be of assistance? For your own luck, I'm suddenly quite taken with the idea of Tim Versick. Oh. Well, actually, I'm in quite a hurry. I did buy us, don't deceive me. At least something is afoot within the walls of this very museum. And that was fascinating, in case I'm not mistaken. Really? Moreover, I have a strong suspicion it is related to the matter about which you've come to me now. But how could it be? We should speak here presently, my dear fellow. For now, I must return to my work. Well, back to being a temporary waxwork exhibit? What is this place? Madame de Spells came to London from France three years ago, I understand. Since she opened this little wax waxwork museum last year, it's enjoyed great popularity in London. There are museums like this in Japan too, but these displays are something else. I mean, they aren't made from actual real people, are they? The extreme re realism of these waxwork models is a particular secret of the Tuspels family, they say. They earned renown during the French Revolution for waxworks of victims of the guillotine. Ugh, that sounds grim. The gruesome scenes were portrayed with such realism in the expressions of the faces of the condemned. Apparently, the sculptors were miles directly from the corpses right there at the side of the executions. I thought... That really turns my stomach. That's just one of several legends about the Tuspel's family. Whether there's any truth in it, I couldn't say. This museum houses models of famous people from all over the globe. 
Nevertheless, the most popular of the museum by quite some margin is this House of Horrors. Cults of you know, Horrors? Of course, visitor numbers are dwindling now as a result of the Great Exhibition. People usually flock here to see the exhibits of some of London's most vile criminals at that gruesome club. Naturally, some of the mysteries portrayed here were sent to the gallows. So they're even different now than the models of them! <laughs> Have you heard of poor text? My dear fellow, the public live for poor text. They yearn to be shocked. So the hideous exhibits in here are... They're all portrayals of real events that actually took place. Is it just me, or did the temperature in here just seem to drop? Anyway, I advise you not to think too deeply about what you see here. Oh, he's back to being a black smoke, is he? Well, blues. We are currently in Madame Two Spells. Not, not bad. Two, two swords. I have no idea what you're talking about. To speak to Herlock Holmes, not sure if Holmes. I have no idea what you're talking about. Who is temporarily being a waxwork? What do you mean by a temporary waxwork, Mr. Holmes? Exactly what you see. I'm part of the exhibits here, catching these criminals in the act. Catching them? Every half an hour, I hunt in a different killer in one of these places and dump a new post to his scenario. When members of the public come for a closer look, I offer them my hat to shake. For a shilling, I'll happily allow them to take a photograph with us. Us? Does he mean him and the waxwork murderers in here? But... Oh, why, Mr. Sholmes? My dear fellow, isn't it obvious? For the money! She really brought at me, though. Very fitting for the house of horrors. As it stands, I may struggle to pay this month's rent, and I have the ravenous iris to consider. Honey, I'm so hungry. If I should shelf, I shall have to ask you to do your bit, Mr. Rado. What's it threatening to rob you into now? So, with that in mind, how about a photograph? A special treat, you may have your pick of the murderers and scoundrels in here. The choice is yours. Uh, maybe some other time? Remember, Mr. Rado, ignore me at your peril. Well, what is it you like to ask me, then? Um, actually, it's, it's about Lord Van Zeex. Oh, I've read Mr. Reaper. How do you find him? Well, I trust? And so I filled Mr. Sholmes in about everything I've learned. About Lord Van Zeex, about Professor Herbrain, and about the strange coincidence that I had been at the university together. So, I'm wondering what it was that happened to make Lord Van Zeeks such a different person. Oh, sure that you'd know, Harry. You said that there was something going on here in this exhibit hall before, that something was afoot, and that you believed it was related to what I wanted to ask you about. Um, Mr. Sholmes? He suddenly climbed up. Well, it seems we reached the unavoidable. Greetings! Oh, uh, hello. What did she appear from? And what was she wearing? Could she look any more mysterious? I hope you are appreciating my old museum. Good lord, two thoughts in a single stream? This is excessive. Farewell. Sorry, have we... Mr. Sean, do you know this? Not again. My apologies. I'm Edmarado to Spells. This is my museum of white work. You... you the Madame to Spells? You're so. They're only 26 years younger, I might add. Alright, this is the case where the hot people show up. Correct. Also, her Halloween costume looks great. Uh... 9% historical, but an excellent high-quality co uh, cosplay. Is not significant somehow? I'm a madame in name only. It has a certain vision de savoir. You're right. Firstly, I must apologize for my waxworks, or rather, one waxwork in particular. That'll be Mr. Shonzon. 
I was not to believe he was a good detective, but he seems unable to settle. Next time you move from your designated exhibit, there will be toilet trouble. Chat, did you see that? Chat, clip that. Do clip that, because we just watched Sherlock Holmes just eat it. It is my favorite animation in the game. He just, he just yeeted. She sounds deadly serious. That's a problem. Am I supposed to ask Mr. Sean about Lord of Six now? Let's not forget what Ellie said before. There's only being a foot right here in the museum, I mean. Yes, I know, but... I'm so curious, I want to know what's happening here. I've only got enough on our plate already. Did you make all these waxworks, my answer skills? I did. I am the third generation of waxwork out of zombies, you know. Gosh! It was my grandmother who began the tradition in my family. Her fortunes were checkered, living through the turbulent times of the French Revolution as she did. So that is when she acquired the savoir faire. That leads to the astonishing life like this. All these wife really do look as though they're alive. In fact, they look more alive than Hilly. <laughs> well, you see, it's simply killed off as the most atrocious of men in the criminal past. Only the boxes were created in the presence of the real people on which they are modeled, in the hours immediately following their executions. That is the secret to their extraordinary life like this. That sounds terrifying. All oh, walks of life have similar challenges, I'm sure. To carry out one straight part acts alone, one must go to extraordinary lands. I say this all a reflection of society. I create only that which the public wishes to see. Why wouldn't the public have wished for something less horrifying? Do not fear. Sorry? This room is the only one in the museum with such a macabre theme. I do hope you'll explore. These are bottles of famous singers, actors, politicians, something for whatever he taste, I hope. It was Iris who dragged me straight in here, come to think of it. Sorry, that's a shit of easy into things. Um, what's the situation with that? Ah, oh, my temporary work with money. He approached me some days ago, you see, what's your business proposal? Oh, what sort of proposal? My dear madame, what these budgets they business is the addition of a world famous great detective. Oh, oh where's to that effect? <sighs> Naturally, I'm well aware that Mr. Schultz is widely known in London as a talented detective. It's a great detective, actually. He's very specific about it. Yes, the creme de la crab. So let's keep to come to some other ways with him, of course. But sadly, we were unable to agree to us. Let me guess. Someone wanted to charge an exorbitant price for his services? For me, a 500 pounds. Oh, diamond you called wax. This very much. Oh, what's the other fact? Mr. Charles might have ever done a slightly with the sales pitch. Effectively, the museum has a shortage of funds at the moment due to unforeseen circumstances. So we came to the current arrangement instead. Surely he doesn't really need to be doing what he's doing, though, does he? I would think not, but he was very insistent. I have a 50 shilling problem that must be resolved by the morning. Was that a fact? It's the pawnbroker, that's what it is. He must have something to redeem. Is the consulting detective's work not going so well? I wonder, could I ask you something? Uh, yes, so? I'm just curious, is anything going on in the museum at the moment? Some kind of incident, perhaps? Whoever suggested such a thing to you? Oh, well, it was... Your temporary wife woke up there who mentioned it to me a little... Oh, he's disappeared. A wax model is worth about, not some tawdry objects for trade. 
There you are. Do you think they have it again when you should be working? Do you wish to be melted down? My dear madame, she spells save your reference, but I'm more pressing concerns. The max can wait. So it is about your current problem we must now throw into melting pot instead. Personally, I advise you not to involve the police. Why are we not? She's turned as white as a sheet. Because you have your disposal a great detective whose services you may employ for a mere 50 shots. No, please be aware that I prefer. No, I insist upon payment in advance. Very well. May we'll I see if the great detective is up to live up to his name, shall we? Before I engage my analytical processes, I must ask you to clarify something. What prey is behind the curtain? The such as the two spell special exhibit, there is an extra charge to see it. The special exhibit in the house for us. We must pick a special killer then, I presume. Would you be so kind as to draw back the curtain, I wonder? Oh, absolutely not. No. There is nothing I miss behind there. Nothing I miss, madame? What about the arm protruding ominously from under the curtain? I strongly encourage you to allow me to seal the eyes behind before the situation wor worsens. Yes, very well. I will draw back the curtains, but only a sous-sol. I must confess, I peeked behind the curtain earlier. The two spells special exhibit is a very bleak graveyard scene indeed. Yet, somewhat surprisingly, the wax we killer will respect is nowhere to be seen. What does strike one, however? Is the portly gentleman lying peacefully on his back on the floor? Not the bad Mr. Shons, the man before is the ruthless killer himself. I'm afraid not, my dear fellow. He's a perfectly ordinary London gentleman. Not even a waxwork, in fact. What? As guilty may as these waxworks are, they are always distinguishable from real humans. So, I want to present my two conclusions. The first is that a sizable business transaction has been taking place in this special exhibit. What? Why would you say that? And the second is that the aforementioned transaction is linked to a serious crime. She looks as pale as candle wax. I, I don't understand. So, Madam to Spells, as you've agreed to my fear, you shall now have the pleasure of seeing this famously great detective and temporary exhibit at work. Oh dear. To begin with, we must ask ourselves what exactly is afoot here in this museum. The answer is revealed by the bundle of banknotes protruding so helpfully from your bag. My estimation is some 200 pounds. This is all my own money. So, what does the large sum of money reveal? Not as much as the involuntary glance you cast over see my the spells. Yes, the answer lies where your eyes now fall. The significance of 200 pounds is revealed by that public notice. Waxwork for sale? Your business has a hard time, so it would seem. In short, you sold the infamous killer the centerpiece of your special exhibit for the sum of 200 pounds. No! Now, let's explore the next curiosity which we are present. Prevent, bleh, 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 the next curiosity with which we are presented. Who is the portly gentleman stretched out so peacefully on the floor? It appears the man has suffered a severe shock. The cause of which is clearly known to you. Unfortunately, my lad, keeping secrets does not appear to be your forte. What tells about such a strong word was, of course, the 200 pounds. I fear that you twisted the gentleman around your little finger most effectively. What are you suggesting? You rashly agreed to purchase the last rat's work for the sum of 200 pounds. Only way you can find the money over to the comfortable and what an extortion amount you would pay. But it was no longer in his hands. And the result was see the before us. He collapsed in shock. Yes, the killer in this special exhibit fetched a killer prize. We only pray that the gentleman's dreams are not plagued with regret. Wow, 
question that rises then uh, is what has become of the wax by Chinese hands? As can say the problem for a moment. You you cannot possibly What immediately strikes me about this conundrum is the young man standing over there. Who is this fellow? We need only observe his neckerchief. Such as is worn by policemen as a secret sign to tell members of the force that a crime is being perpetrated. Guess that this young man isn't in the cup of policemen currently investigating this museum. No, well, in fact, it's Sergeant John Clay. What are you talking about? Mass Press Library. He received triple accolades at last year's police single rewards. But next, we turn attention to the old man's staff with a particularly unsightly visage. I've been watching closely as he hasn't moved a muscle. Almost, in fact, as if he were a waxwork. Uh, but, but you. Your reaction only confirms my suspicions, madame. This is once, of course, observe. The telltale sign that instantly proves whether or not this old man is a waxwork is the obvious price tag. Throw pens? A tragically low price, you might say. The rest of the going rate for aging waxwork riddled with cracks. May you sold to the portly gentleman for an exorbitant 200 pounds. The walking behavior that's sure to attract the attention of Scotland Yard. Is that so, madame? I do not. Yes, the last one you saw has already been seized by the police and remains in that custody as we speak. Your man must be reunited with his grave in the special exhibit and not a moment too soon. Thus concludes Herlock Holmes' great deduction of this horrifying puzzle. I see I sent you all into silence. You have Hurley, you have... And you've obviously said this young lady in the process. Her cauldron looks awfully hard. Now, um, if I could bring up one point, Mr. Shams. Ah, the story is narrowed at one point. I will leave my dear fellow. The point of the deduction that the special exhibit features this old policeman. So that would mean he's the particularly ruthless murderer, wouldn't it? The killer policeman, Audubon. Sorry? Now the mysterious series of murders around the capital only last year. Police rush to the scene every time, only to find the culprit had disappeared into the ether. It turned out the culprit was the policeman himself, a senior officer by the name of Audubon. So that's who this sinister looking old man that is supposed to be? Indeed. Particularly grim face, is it not? Unforgettable, in fact. Yes, I remember that OG's can't miss only too well. But is 200 pounds a lot of money for a wax model? That would be enough to afford one of the latest steam carriages if that puts things into perspective. So, it is quite a lot then. Is there anything else you wish to add? Before I melt you down? That bubbling wax is looking more and more ominous. Ah, uh, the smell of all that molten wax is starting to hurting me. Mr. Sons did more or less just accuse her to her face, so... I think I might have to call on your assistance here, Iris, if that's alright. Make some minor corrections to the great detective's great deductions. Of course, it's alright. We'll see something straight. Well, we'll set sign then, shall we? Before Madame Tispel's vents her anger. Just what I was waiting to hear, my dear fellow. So, Madame Tispel's a crossword agreement. You shall now have the pleasure of seeing this famous great detective and temporary exhibit at work. Hold it, Mr. Sholmes. More importantly, right, Wolfie and Marisha, while I sympathize with the long hair debate, uh, more, somewhat more to the point, it do be styling. And that is, my lunch spell is all vibes, no substance. And that long braid is complete vibe. She definitely looked in this direction, it's true. But no, she should sell any of her waxworks, even for 200 pounds. Well, she lost all her hand and sold them to making them, don't you think? I'll find the wax. If it were me, I wouldn't sell them for anything. For that much money, I would. Well, it sounds like that makes me a bad person. Uh, well, anyway, I wonder if the 200 pounds could have some other significance. Let's follow the footage glass again and see if there's anything else that could explain it. Aww. 
This looks very suspicious to me, and I'm sure that's the answer we've been looking for. Shrinking of that nature will hasten the end of the universe, Miss Lee. The end of the universe? At the very least, you can examine the end before you make the conclusions. You're the universe that much, my dear fellow. Well, if it is for the survival of the universe, I suppose I could. Fine. Fine. The 200 quid very clearly stated was apparently not enough proof. What's that note doing pinned on the wall there? Oh, yes, let's see. A dear madame just spells, we've taken the prisoner from- we've taken the prisoner from this room. The price for a safe return is 200 pounds. Have the money ready by noon on 23rd October. What? This is- this is- this is just like the sort of thing that's left behind when someone is kidnapped. Yes, it's a ransom note. Exactly. Take that! Bye. The significance of the 200 pounds is revealed by that ransom note. Quite so. Quite so. I must congratulate the criminals on their inventiveness of ducking a waxwork. 200 pounds is no small ransom fee, yet you clearly intend to pay it. The model in question has special importance, so I put together all the money I have. In summary, then, the 200 pounds you have in your handbag is ransom money. Now, let's the next curiosity with which we are presented. Who is the portly gentleman stretched out so peacefully on the floor? Give the man has suffered a severe shock, but which is clearly known to you. Unfortunately, madame, keeping secrets does not appear to be your forte. Well, if the last one was kidnapped, where does that leave us in terms of who this man is? We could just ask him when he comes round. I think the point of this exercise is to understand the beauty of the deduction process, Iris. Yes, you're right. Ellie's trying so hard, we mustn't let him down. Well, there's little doubt that he suffered a shock. That much seems clear. In that case, what's Madame Tuswell trying to hide? Let's have a closer look around. This is just Madame Tispel's right hand, isn't it? Yes, it must be. I can clearly see her left hand after all. Oh, but, but wait a minute. This is the left hand as well. Look. Don't say such c creepy things, Iris, please. And it seems very stiff, too. In fact, it's really hard. You, you mean... It's made of wax? The tiny lad. What dealt the man such a shocking blow was, of course, the waxwork hand. Indeed. With a strong swipe on the limb, one could deliver a very substantial blow. No, how could you? The hand protruding from the bottom of your cape. It ought to be a right hand. The closer inspection reveals that, in fact, it's a left hand. And somewhat masculine as well. In other words, it does not belong to you, madame, is the hand of a waxwork model. Some of the visitors to my museum can be troublesome. So, middle of the exhibits, I close damage. So, you mean that arm? Um... Yes. This gentleman saw fit to try and remove it as a souvenir. Yes, yeah, more for sake. Like taking a branch of a cherry tree when you go to view the blossoms. I'm afraid I had to teach the man a lesson. You confronted the man and tried to take the arm back. And the result, the man we see before us, he was not unconscious. A point we may need to revisit later, but for the time being, we have a conclusion. Yes, the killer of this special exhibit has been kidnapped. The question that rises then is what has become of the waxwork that changed hands? Let's just end the problem for a moment. You cannot possibly. The immediately strange about this conundrum is the young man standing over there. Who is this fellow to find the answer we need only observe is Nakachev. According to Mr. Sholmes, the young Nakachev is assigned to other policemen that some crime is underway. Why can you can't get feelings without revealing his identity? Yes. The secret that's closely guarded by Scotland Yard. 
but Mr. Shantz didn't hesitate to give away. Well, uncovering secrets is in any true detective nature, of course. Right. Anyway, judging from Madame Chispel's direction reaction to Mr. Shantz's deduction, I think perhaps we might not have identified the man quite correctly. Who is this fellow? To find the answer with me, you can only observe his shoulder stuff. No such Bentley's human master, so that, that I can assure you. In other words, the man standing here, the young Sergeant John Fay, is in fact the Vanguard Lords, a wax with model. I seem to remember it was the Orca Capone of the real person in the first place, Mr. Shams. He has become quite a celebrity in London, being the winner of no less than three policing awards last year. I simply had to make a model of the man. Natural. What other explanation could there be? And it was this detective's arm that was pulled off by the man on the floor in this special exhibit, wasn't it? Next. Hello, Twilight Alchemist. Well, thank you for the 75 bits and the tiny Corgo. Hello, my friend. Next. We turn our attention to the old man's hat before him with a particularly unsightly visage. I've been watching closely. Oh, but you. I was there once, of course. Observe. So I said that it's the obvious price tag. A killer policeman called Antimo, was it? What's the old man? There was a lot of papers last year, but I can't say I know what he looks like. It's a very low price. This was very low price, though. It's dropping since it money. Only enough for a few measly hours of gas in Mr. Garadov's lodgings, in fact. So, if this is the special killer taken from the special exhibit, is it? The wax looks like somebody stole from the museum and tried to ransom for 200 pounds? Is this crusty old killer placement Ottomo? Really? Perhaps we should look again and see if another idea pops up. Look at this. The old man's tapping his foot like crazy. He seems to be fast asleep though. He's not having a full consciousness by any means. Not being a twitch! Never mind that. The point is, waxworks don't tap their feet. Or twitch! Look at his arm, too. We've seen a scarf like that somewhere around here, haven't we? Take that! The title sound that instantly proves whether or not this old man is a waxwork is the obvious twitch. Even the most realistic waxworks do not exhibit a twitch. In other words, this little man is in fact a genuine member of Scotland Yard. Slight shift in your choice of adjectives, though. And there you have it. Well, my just spells? With what? It was me who contacted the police and demanded that someone come in the first place. He is clearly fatigued. He is something. He's clearly fatigued. He is falling asleep. But the, what's this talk about showing a price of three pounds? No doubt the price of the muffler, which the old Bobby purchased rec recently at a local market. I presume you observe the scarf tied around his arm, so that I'll strike you, Mr. Marahedo. Yes, the secret sign used by detectives to show that some criminal activity is currently underway. Of course, because as you know, there's been just such criminal activity happening here, as you deduced from the very beginning, detective. So, it seems that we finally arrive at the truth. The wax worker of the especially realistic killer from the special exhibit has been kidnapped. At Scotland Yard are already investigating. But the model's whereabouts remain a mystery. This concludes Colonel Shams' great deduction of this horrifying puzzle. You love the scarf? It's so obvious for a secret signal. It sure is. Such a terrible secret signal. But that's okay. Who said that they were going to be good? All sorts of people visit my museum here. Men and women, young and old. Sometimes they drop in just for a short time on the way back from the pub. I welcome them all. But if anyone tries to damage my exhibits, I do not take it lightly. Anyway. Your great deduction was even more enchanting than I have been there to believe. It was a pleasure, my dear madame. I'm gratified that you enjoyed the spectacle. 
As for your rough customer, you know that he'll gain conscience shortly and return home. What concerns me more is the wax work from the special display. If it was indeed genuinely abducted, Yes, tragically it was. I'm going to ask you to recount us the events surrounding the stolen wax work. In as much detail as possible, if you please. Very well. That's what I told you what you know. I must insist that you return to your work. The balance of a great detective could be better used to, I feel, but as you wish. Oh, there's very clearly some really good mocap in this production, too. And that's, I mean, that's a smart choice, Magistra. So, right on a technical level, a keyframe animating a bunch of these poses, uh, or some of the more complex animations, I should say would be a lot of work when I mean, you can smooth that over a lot more and focus on the strong direction. Like the snappiness of everything Herlock Holmes does. Note, there is one other animation that is very, 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 very clearly mocapped. That is my favorite single animation in the entire game. Tell us more about the stolen waxwork, please. It was some days ago now when I came in here for the morning. I immediately noticed that waxwork was missing from the special exhibit here. It is your most prominent display, so that's why the curtains were closed. And I found the glass and yard in its place. The culprit must have broken in during the night and taken it, then? So this waxwork that was stolen was the model of some horrible criminal, I suppose. Oh yeah. Alright, Rinosuke walking back is mocap. Um, some of the... I think some of the breakdowns could arguably be mocap, though they're they're weird. They're clearly heavily altered ones. Of a particularly horrible criminal impact. There's a killer who lives in more profound scarred society than any other, I would say. The Professor. Not a name I've heard of. So, isn't that right, though? It seems the circle is complete. Sorry? The professor case happened around the time I was born, wasn't it? Indeed, it did. Indeed, it did, Iris. Ten years ago, a series of murders that rocked the capital. Ten years ago? Yes, as at the time that Baron von Zeeks graduated from the university. In fact, what? Surely he's not saying. So the big event that changed Mr. Reaper's life. I'll see you so much. It was the professor. Who was this professor then? It was a series of gruesome murders that had all done in Griffin Terror a decade ago. After five victims were killed, the man was arrested and put to death. And now he's immortalized here in wax for all Londoners to admire and enjoy. But of course, he happens to be absent in presence on account of the death of Judge. Exactly. This is why I love using Sherlock Holmes. You don't need to say anything else, but when I played for the first time, all they said was the professor, and I jaw dropped. Because there's only one professor it could possibly be. This is the game's equivalent to Professor Moriarty. But I don't understand. How is all this related to Lord Van Six? You must first understand, my dear Paul, why it is that the professor earned such infamy? It was due to the victims he chose, some of Whitehall's finest. What do you mean, Hurley? What do you mean, Hurley? Those men about the professor were some of the highest members of the British aristocracy. Members of the nobility, even royalty. It sent shockwaves through the country's administration. Members of the... Oh, wait, of course. What Professor Herbrain said? One of his exes from a family with noble blood. Oh, gosh. It was the fifth victim that led to the professor's arrest. The last of the victims from Killer's Prey was a young noble by the name of... Clint Van Zeeks. No! It could also be technically Professor Wilson, but uh, definitely not that. I don't believe it. Van Zeeks? I'm sure you can piece together the rest for yourself. In the wake of his older brother's murder, the young Barack pursued a career as a prosecutor, and eventually became the Reaper we know today. I had no idea Lord Van Zeeks had such a tragic past. Right, that's all I can say on the matter, for the time being at least. After all, I have work to do. As a waxwork exhibit. I 
I am afraid I shall have to excuse myself as well. Oh, yes, of course. It's, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Well, none of the predicted scenarios I've been analyzing involved you. Oh, sorry. Well, none of the predicted scenarios I've been analyzing involved you coming to visit me here. It's been too long. It really has. I'm delighted to see you, Barack. It's been ten years, but here we are, meeting in a prison of all places. I can't forgive myself for what happened to Mr. Asman. I just can't. I, I still can't believe it could happen. Tomorrow, the court will decide. Yes, I have a younger Eastern man acting for an offense. He seems reliable enough, though. It, it was an accident. A terrible accident. He, he assures me he can prove it. I must warn you. Oh, I know, I know. I've heard already. You're going to be prosecuting, aren't you? Yes. Since I've returned to England, I've heard lots of stories. Barak, are you really... What? Never mind. I know that you have my best interests at heart. My friend is on trial. I wouldn't entrust it to anybody else. Of course, I fully understand. Thank you, Barak. Until tomorrow, then, I'll see you in court. And chat, we shall see how court uh, does next time. I'm afraid I must be off for tonight, so we will get through, we made through the first investigation part. So, and we have a nitpick to close off. All right. I mean, there are a lot of things that one could nitpick in here. Um, I think, though, the one that I want to take is going to be, well, relatively chunky of a nitpick. Uh, and it is relating to uh, the experiments and... No, no, actually, let's go with a different one. Let's go with the Great Exhibition space uh, and who is represented. I can just see no rhyme or reason uh, as to why they picked Austria and the Ottoman Empire as like the two other main forces that are there, apart from the visuals. And it's kind of a shame, because this is a point where we're in a transitional period, right? It takes until the 1930s uh, with the New York uh, World's Fair for things to really transform into going from uh, science and industry to being cultural heritage and this grand showcase of arts and technology. Uh, but we are in a transitional period where we're starting to get that, and it doesn't seem to be something that they engage with. In fact, the only reason I can think of why they had these characters, or why they picked the Austro-Hungarian Empire, in fact, is for, to justify one character who we will meet next time and deserves a nitpick all to themselves to be here. So, you know. Uh, I don't find it to be particularly well-rounded, and I think they could have done a lot more here. Exactly, right? It would have been fun for Ryanosuke to run to other Japanese people at the World's Fair. Probably some of the first he'd seen since Suzato and Sasuke Natsuma. Heck, it's not entirely impossible that one could see Sasuke Natsuma. I think he'd be hard pressed again to go, but given that there seems to be this like blending of arts and uh, technology, you could see something there. You could actually have Iris interact with other cultures, yeah, just spend more time with it. And then the flip side, a compliment. The fucking... The Gina 2.0 rehabilitation arc? Fucking talk to your stuff. Right, Gina in this case is so good. And I, I just adore her. I adore the characters that they've brought with this. And they're doing, they're doing so much good work here. 
And yes, Arave, unfortunately you came in right at the end of the stream. Uh, the VOD will be here, of course. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately I do have to get going a bit earlier than usual with Great Days Attorney streams. So, we are coming up right on the end. So, in that vein, uh, if you did enjoy, uh, I hope you'll consider following Spreading the Word, or consider subscribing. Uh, big thanks to everyone who did uh, during today's stream. You are all very appreciated. Extra big shoutouts to our patrons over here who make this possible. If you want to help join them, uh, you can head over to patreon.com slash history for as little as $2 a month. That was three. $2 a month in order to help make sure that you get credit in the credits and that uh, I am able to keep expanding and doing more things. I am very, very, very excited to say our next stream is going to be Tuesday, and we will have uh, Dr. Richard Cole joining us uh, as our guest for The Forgotten City. So, some really cool philosophy of history stuff, but also a lot of, you know, Greece, Roman antiquities. We've not branched into that a whole lot on this channel. It's time to fix that. Everything I've heard says it's a phenomenal history game, so I hope you will very much join me for that. That is going to be at 2 o'clock Eastern Time, uh, that's uh, 7 p.m. UK time, so I hope you are all as, all as excited as I am. Until then, though, good night.